All right, hard yarners. Today uh, we are joined by the ever delightful David Hughes. Uh, Thank we, you so much we for a, having me. We had a wonderful chat. It was actually really it was fun. It's delightful. It I had a good fun. time. Um, I do have a few sponsors to thank. This uh, one, f- f- yeah, no, go on. Well, this one I got. Yeah, whatever, whatever. <laughs> this one I got to read because there's a there's a bit to it. But um, True Grit WA. It's a military inspired obstacle course. Um, it's coming up on uh, Sept. It's Sunday. And Saturday, Saturday and Sunday, the uh, 14th and 15th. That's generally the order they go. (laughs) 14th and 15th of October. Um, Yeah, uh, listeners, um, it's something obviously that we do a lot here. We talk about like ultra marathons and doing the hard things. So this is a very tough uh, little challenge. Um, But you now have, it's a 10 kilometer course. Uh, It's, It's how long? (laughs) <laughs> it's 10 kilometers. I'll get far. <laughs> yeah, 10 kilometers um, of mili- military inspired um, uh, courses. And there, I think there's other ones like five. What does military one. inspired mean? Like you get shot at while you're doing it? No, what? you got to like jump over things, crawl under. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's In the mud and all that crap. Yeah. yeah. Some oh. bald dude screaming at you. Yeah, exactly. So um, our listeners have a 10% uh, a 10% code. So it's 10% uh, code for you, our listeners. Sorry, is that you get. You don't have to do 10% of the course if you sign up. <laughs> what is, what's the 10%? It's 10% off the entry price. So oh. if you're a listener uh, and you put in the code True Yarns, T R U E Y R. Why? Why A R N S? And I'll say that again. T- I was about to say, R- if you can't spell e- true yarns, you shouldn't be doing it. T R U E Y A R N S. That is true yarns. That is your ten percent code to get entry into the course. I'm going to be the MC for those two days. Oh, as lovely! Well. You know when they go, you'll like, be doing the screaming. I'll be the get one. under there, Maggie. <laughs> That's exactly. I'll be like, hey, we're taking off in ten, nine, eight. That guy. So um, oh. I'll be a lot. I'll be down there for two days. Um, so yeah, that's. Uh, I'm going to come along and do it. Actually, are you really? Fuck no! <laughs> <he's mad. laughs> Classic. Um, also, this episode is brought to you by Raunchy Brewing Co. They are the beer that's actually good. Um, I know we did talk about not drinking on this podcast today. I don't remember that. I don't remember that at all. But uh, yeah, the uh, it, they are a great beer. They've got a few other beers. Uh, my favourite is the Lager and the Sir Henry Stout, which is very similar to Guinness. Um, so I love that. That's great. And most importantly, the reason we can have this beautiful. St- Know, studio that you've you've really enjoyed tonight. Um, Alltradescover.com.au, which you can see behind our lovely guest there. Oh, hello! Look at that, David Hughes. Um, yeah, they're a, they're a great organisation and um, insurance company that they supply insurance for anyone that's involved in trades, uh, big or small, uh, liability insurance, and for anything that your injuries, mistakes, um, and you know even getting sued and stuff. I guess so. It's always handy to have those sorts of things. So hit up alltradescover.com.au for all of your trades cover needs. Sick. I think I got out all of the... Oh, do you know what? I'll give him a, one more shout out. Read White. Read Right and Co. I said it sort of half incorrectly because when I say it, Read White and Co. It read sounds, White? Yeah, but it's Read Right and And who are they? Co. That's the local cafe in Kingsley that I go to and I lost a bet with him a couple of weeks ago and I said I'd give him a <laughs> shout out and I'm giving him another shout out because I didn't quite do it right, but they are fucking legends and he's like-minded. So, yeah, get to Red, White and Co. and all of the um, people there are uh, legends. Um, so this episode, we're joined by David Hughes. Well, it's um, been a pleasure, Blanche. Eh? It's good. What did we talk about? Because it was it's a bit, bit very wholesome. It was quite wholesome, wasn't it? We talked about um, all your sponsors. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, parenting was a big thing. We talked about parenting um, and father. Lifestyle father. changes and careers and... Health, training. Um, yeah, the career stuff. Yeah, the, the uh, is it, you know what? Very motivating episode, I think. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of people see the inside of people. Oh, travel. We've seen a, a, yeah, lot, travel. a lot of travel stuff. Um, but I think this is a good episode to see the inside of how uh, my mind ticks and Hughes's mind ticks in regards to what motivates us to do the things we do. Yeah, I think so. Mm. I think that's a fair a fair assessment of the uh, the conversation. I am, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a very strong advocate for what you were saying earlier as well about you know saying fuck off to money sometimes. Yeah, I do think it's important. A hundred percent. It's a good message. Yeah, but uh, sorry about the you know 
promoting kitty fiddling. But <laughs> I'm, I'm not. <laughs> stand by it. Nah, it's I a, stand by it. It's a fucking awesome episode. Uh, very fun. And uh, yeah, enjoy that one. So cheers. Let's get hard. Welcome to Hard Yarns Podcast. I am fucking fat. <laughs> <laughs> Anything Chris White says, please <laughs> disregard it. 5D is actually a state of being. It's a unity consciousness. That was Hard Yarns with me, Frankie Rose. So I'm going to throw it over to your co-host. Daniel Delby. And Cameron Branch. I would do this and then I'd gong. <laughs> <laughs> Free in attendance for the millions listening at home. <laughs> Let's get hard. Yes, it does look yeah, that looks glorious. Yeah, oh, look lovely, lovely, lovely man. Um, thank you for coming on. I'm just gonna it's not even a sponsored no. thing. <laughs> no it's product just, placement. Keep your hand over the can. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, it's shine. Better energy. I've been have you have, have you seen um, a few of us have been having these? Mm. Um Xavier and Chris Picello. Yeah. Just randomly. I've been having these. They're, it's like a nootropic or something. Is it Na- good? Yeah, a naturally flavoured nootropic drink. Does it taste good Yeah, though? it tastes good. So I had it because I, w- I was getting a bit... I had too much coffee one day. And I'll... Oh, it's good. It's actually good. Just like our Get the sponsors, sponsors in. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it's good. Um, oh, what a start. That's um, James Clark, who's actually a training partner for... Um, for uh, True Grit, which you would have um, the show, no True Grit, the uh, the we're, we're a sponsor, which oh, you would yeah, have yeah. heard yeah. just you know a couple of seconds ago if you're yeah. listening to this episode. But <laughs> um, they're sponsoring uh, our podcast, and I was actually calling him for a bit of a chat about True Grit. Um, it's like an obstacle course, right? Yeah, but um, yeah, I, I don't know. I've just been having these zero sugar apparently, but I've not looked into the benefits. Don't don't look into it. And don't the, look like, in what's in that. Yeah, don't look into the rest of it. Just have zero zero sugar is a good. Way to start. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is it is it got caffeine in it? I think so. That's why I sort of like, but less sensitive to caffeine. So it's a uh, refrigerant uh, uh, contains caffeine and is not recommended for children, pregnant or lactating women, or individuals sensitive to caffeine. <laughs> Consume no more than one can per day. <laughs> formulated <laughs> caffeinated. How beverage. much caffeine is in it then? There must be a fair bit. It can't um, in a can that big. It can't be more than one hundred and ten uh, per serving, which is, I guess, this can. Yeah. Um, Eighty, 80 milligrams. milligrams of caffeine. Yeah, I mean that's not super high. Okay. It's and I've just been having it like a weak coffee when I maybe I've had a big coffee already. So I don't I don't drink coffee. I mean I've never drunk coffee, but I, I have pre workout pretty much every day. Oh, how does that go? It goes great. Yeah, but it's given me a caffeine addiction. To the, to, well, to the point where if I don't train, I don't have pre workout. So on days when I don't train, I get headaches. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, that's what that. It took me ages to work out what that was. I didn't work out until COVID when the gym shut down. Yeah, and I was just doing exercise outside, but I wasn't doing like any heavy lifting or anything, so I didn't take pre workout. I would just go for like a, a jog or a quick walk along the coast. Yeah, but I didn't take pre workout for that, and I was like, why am I getting headaches? Yeah, and it was because of that. Yeah, so I, I, mine's the same. So if I don't have caffeine, mm. I get the headaches, the withdrawals. But if I have too much, I get all. Skittish and tingly and anxious, anxious, and, yeah, anxious. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I've been having these um, from time to time instead of a coffee. How much is in a coffee, though? Do you know? I don't know. I should do the research. <laughs> no, <laughs> Just I replace I, it with something worse. Well, I don't think it's that much. I don't feel skittish when yeah. I have them. Instead, if I'm like on the cusp of had a, because you have three shots of coffee in a in a large, I think it is really, which is a lot. But um, maybe that is as much as that then. But like uh, Chris Pachulo can't have more than. I think he was saying he was like, I can't even have a whole one for the whole night because he's not drinking at the moment. Chris has gone to another level. Lately. Yeah, I'm very happy. I'm it's very proud of Chris. It's what happens when you stop drinking alcohol. Yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, Every, everything becomes far. Like, everything just becomes clearer and more in focus. Chris has, um, <coughs> unless you're Wolfie. Sorry, go on. <laughs> yeah, I think he's graduated. I think he's graduated. Yeah, I think he's heart. He's yarns worthy. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I Ooh. think. How's it? How's it, bro? You're going to come on the hard yarn soon? I'd, I'd yeah? Lo- yeah? Lo- I would love to see him on here and I'd love to see the two of you just speak like that for the entire <laughs> episode. That would be fantastic. Mate, he's, um, I'm, I love watching him at the moment. He's I, great. He's uh, great. Even these, the, the get up, the whole lot. Um, yeah, he's going very well. And it's good. I'm so happy because my first couple of gigs at like for the lounge and the pro pro gig were with oh, he's been on. Chris. Yeah. Um, 
So and I'm sort of benefiting from usually in the open micers going after him because he gets the crowd hot. Yeah. And then I just I go in there. It's teed up for me. All I have to do is tell me jokes, and they're already ready to go. Yeah. So. He he sets a really good precedent as well. Like the, pay, the mm. he, he he gives the like a. He's vicious. He is. So the tone that he Dark. sets is like, right, this is potentially what you're in for now. Yes. And therefore, you know, not too many people will come yeah. super dark after him. Nah. So yeah, mine mine doesn't go. We're, I think we're all doing the the Father's Day one this Sunday. Are Sunday, you doing that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Isn't that funny? Heap of fathers leaving their kids. <laughs> <laughs> is it Father's Day on Sunday? Yeah. Is it this? Yeah. Oh, okay. Scotty just got me a not got me. She didn't know. She yeah. didn't. <laughs> Scotty got me uh, some Fuck all. some yeah. purple <laughs> purple socks. Goes with the oh, wall. Oh, lovely! And they're uh, yeah. So I'm going to wear them most times when I gig. Um, I'll wear them on Sunday. Yeah, um, nice. I'm actually struggling at the moment because um, I'm prepping to go to uh, go away. Yeah. And sorry to the listeners. Uh, there's been a few ep- like it's, it's it's a Thursday today, isn't it? What day is it? It's Thursday. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's Thursday. Yeah, yeah. So like usually I try and get them out Wednesday or Tuesday. So They've got something to listen to, and yeah. it's been a hectic week. It's the first time in my life, no, in my life, first time in this journey of podcast where I've felt tired, yeah, and not not unmotivated to do a pod, but just like it's not the priority today or this week, and that's how it felt this week. Sorry, <laughs> listeners, I just <laughs> I was just like, um, I can't organize a guest. Let's just get someone on I like talking to and yeah. find easy to chat to. That's what I, I, um. Even like Pinder, hit up Pinder as well. Yeah. Um, but I ended up getting to have my chat with Pinder yesterday. He did oh, yeah, tattoos. You did, you did the tattoos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so we went. To so the yeah, tell me what the arm one means then. Um. Okay. So what's that one? Can you see it on the? Okay, that one there. That's Om. Om. <laughs> Buddhism, basically. Uh, it's like the frequency of the universe, the universal frequency. So when that's what when the Buddhists go Om, that sound is the same frequency yeah. at which we. Has that got, got anything to do with that um, Om Mani Pendi or whatever? It, do you, have you, that mantra? It's, it was I, when I was potentially. in potentially. I think it was not. Yeah, it was when I was in Nepal. It was like this thing that they just played everywhere. It was like their I don't know their their number one yeah. of, on the charts. <laughs> or whatever. But it was like a. But it was a proper like. Yeah, was, Second only to Jay Z or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It was like it, it would have been up there with like Beyonce or something. <laughs> yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. why is this on the radio all the time? <laughs> And I, r- I remember just randomly seeing it tattooed on someone once, but it was yeah. in English, so it was quite jarring. I was like... <laughs> yeah. It's part of me, like, because... <clears throat> is it gay? <laughs> is it gay? You know, is it, like... Is it fucking cliche? Is it such a... Does it matter? No, no, no. But, like, I got it in Chinese. I don't speak Chinese. Yeah, but, I mean, it was a thing that you wanted to get on you. Yes, it's something I've wanted to get for a while. So I got that one. Because uh, you could the say the same about any tattoo. Sorry yeah, hundred no. percent. I got uh, that one. There's Wu Wei, which um, Wu Wei is. I talk about it a bit on the podcast. It's effortless action. It's like not forcing things. Yeah, I can never remember what it is when you like when you talk about it. Yeah. The first time I think was it with John. Yeah, potentially. I think you mentioned yeah. it with. No, who, who was the other guy that was on? The one, the one that I, I messaged you, I was like, I've, this is my favourite episode ever. What was his name? You, uh, I'm putting you on the spot now. Oh, yeah, you did message. Was it, um, was it recently? Yeah, it was the guy that you co- oh, jo- uh, John Dr. co-hosted jo- with. Yeah, Jeff, um, yeah, Jeff Wilson, yeah. who's uh, sailing around the world at the moment now. Right, so oh that is, yeah. that's probably like the, the my, my favourite episode of anything I've listened to for a, a very long time. Yeah. I listened to it twice. Wow. Because I just really like listening to him talk. It was yeah. probably the best episode. And yeah. also Delby wasn't. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Not uncommon feedback. <laughs> no, 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 no. Can't wait for Delby back next week. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but no, I really enjoyed it. And that's why I first heard you mention it. But I could never remember what the thing yeah. was when you, when you gave the... So it's just effortless action. I never do a great... Uh, way I never do a good job of explaining it. My best uh, advice is if you want to know what Wu Wei is, go to like Google, no YouTube, Alan Watts Wu Wei. He's very, he's he died, he's dead now. He's uh, an old philosopher. Um, I think he died in the seventies, but his 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 teaching is and his lectures are still incredible mm. and still stand true today. He um he explains it pretty well, and it's hard because Wu Wei like when you're translating Chinese uh, to <laughs> English, the a lot gets lost. The, yeah, yeah. A, lot gets lo- a lot does get lost in translation. So, it's basically it's effortless action. It's going with the flow, like you you have your path, but going using the path of easy uh, least resist- resistance. Yeah. Um, and that's that's um, I've taken that philosophy a while. It's hard. Mm. It's hard to stick to it because sometimes you're like, no, I want that. I'm going for it. 
Yeah. And then no matter what gets in your way, you're like, no, I'm getting it. I'm getting to there. This path, this was the straight line I wanted. But now it's um, when I'm... Oh, that was the shine coming <laughs> back up on me. Um, when it's... Um, when you start to be conscious of your actions and conscious of your thoughts, you start to think about things and how you're, you're approaching them. And if I see a problem come up instead of trying to just go through it or um, ignore it, yeah. I, I just work with it. Like it's just part of yeah. the process. Yeah. Um, because and that's it, isn't it? It's trusting that process. It's yeah. knowing that like the thing that's meant for you will it will be for you. Yes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's just a, it's just a, it's something that I've always liked. And yeah. I see, these are four tattoos that I wanted yeah. for the last 10 years. And I'm just like, I want that one. I want that one over several, several different years. I'd yeah. come up with that one and I never did them. And then I just messaged John and I was like, can you, um, draw on me, draw on me please. And he's like, yeah, let's do them all. And I was yeah. like, oh fuck, I only took him, um, two and a half hours or something. Yeah. He's a fucking genius, John. He is, isn't he? And I do love our chats. Uh, and then I've got the, uh, the Hamza hand on the back there, which is just, you know, protect you from evil and negative energy. Uh, something along those lines. If you get mugged from behind now, you're going to be pissed, aren't yeah. you? Yeah. <laughs> yes. And then um, I've got the, the moon phases, which just sort of symbolizes, oh, you know, yeah. the way we change and evolve as a, mm. as a person as we grow. And I'm certainly changed. And I'm ready for a new... A new life, you know. I've gone through my trauma, quote unquote. Um, so I'm ready. But look where it's led you. Yeah, a hundred percent. Um I was 100%. thinking about it today. Like I did this podcast for the first time, yeah. I think about three years ago. We did it at your house. My front in your uh, front room. Lounge room. Yeah, you're yeah, yeah. You're to like T V room That's just it was on the couch and we had the you had the uh, the hard yarn screen yeah. even still with the with the logo. Mm -hmm. Like even back then it was still the thing that I really admired and still do now mm. to give you your flowers is that thank you. It was well, it was a it was a professional product even back then, and it's it's that thing that I always mm. like. I just live by like do do the thing that you want to do, but treat it like it's your job because yes. it will end up being your job. Hundred percent, um, <clears throat> and I that's think, what you were doing. I think that this is this is turning into what it is because me and Delby are having fun with it. Who? No. <laughs> <laughs> love you Delby I love you I love you um, um, no yeah we're having, we're having fun with it yeah. and um, it's not this isn't the goal this is the final along the way this is leading to other things yeah. like we're going to Sydney on, I'm flying to Sydney next week yeah. to put on a show for listeners Delby just flew to Austria I know from Edinburgh because we have listeners there who mm. want, wanted him to put on a show incredible like what the fuck we have people in Austria who listen this is it's yeah, and it started in a fucking uh, a room, my home office, cat pissed, stained floors. <laughs> yeah, and now it's this. Is that cat still with us? That cat's still with us. Oh, and it fucking pisses me off, pardon the pun. <laughs> <laughs> it's, oh, mate, yeah. As soon as Steph gets her new house, you can have that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, Speaking of Austria and, and Delby being in Austria, yes. when when Cam gets back, you yes. have to insist on another conspiracy episode because it's been a while. I yes, think. 100%. It's been a while. I love, by the way, that... The our beloved Cam McLaren yes. discovered international travel and now he's never here. Yes. He, it's like someone went, do you know that you can, you can get this little book with your face in it and then you're allowed to go wherever you want? And he was like, what the fuck? Are you serious? Yeah. And now he's just like Japan. It's the bug. Yeah. It's the bug. Yeah, yeah I love it. I love that he's got it. I love it. Um, I'm, and I'm going to um, Austria next yes. next week. So to begin with, so we go to Sydney and then I do the show and then I'll fly from there. Oh, you fly from Sydney to Austria? Yeah. Are you going by yourself? Yeah, I'll be in Austria by myself. So I might go to Kitzbühel, Kitzbühel I think. Uh, Kitzbühel. Kitzbühel, yeah. uh, which you already recommended me go to, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. Yeah, um, and then was Holstatt was the other one. Uh, the one that I recommended was Elmau, but that's only because that was the other place that my friends and I used to go there and snowboard. Oh, yeah. Because um, it was so close, but one of them had a, a house there. Like okay. All their family had like a, a holiday chalet thing. All ah, right. Um, so we used to go there because it was like dirt cheap, but it was beautiful as well. And I always, even though we just went to snowboard, I always thought this place must be just as amazing in the summer or the spring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the gondola obviously still yeah. takes you up the mountains and it would be, would be fantastic to see. Oh, but I never got to see it. Out, but it just out looks so summer. beautiful. Oh, the whole really like, uh, so I'm going to Salzburg and then I'll, I'll decide, I'll go for a day trip somewhere. Yeah. The whole start though, they had protesters, the locals protesting last week. So because, someone, yeah, but do you know what they were protesting and this is going to make me potentially not go was <laughs> the fact that there's too many tourists. Oh. And I'm like, well, 
I don't want to be a tourist going to a place where they're protesting tourists going. Because <laughs> mm. it is beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, it looks incredible. So we'll see what happens. But I might go to Kitzbühel to sit and meet the listeners. Yeah, yeah. Have a, what, 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 what do they call it over there? What's a beer over there? It's German though, isn't it? Yeah, I guess. What, what's that? Pro- they say Prost as cheers. Prost? Prost? Do you know, so in school in England, right, we mm. were there for five, we were in the high school for five years. Yeah. For five years, I learned French. For three years, I learned German. For two years, I learned um, Latin. Yeah. And I'm used to all of them. Yeah. But I've just started learning uh, French again. And is it, that's, um, oh, I love I love the idea of learning a language. That's probably the next thing I'll do. Like, I love challenges. I love yeah. bettering myself. I think learning another language quite fluently, not perfectly. That's my aim. I want to learn French fluently because one of my favourite authors is French and I want to be able to read, like, the original works wow. rather than just the English. Because, mm. obviously, as we were saying, stuff gets lost in translation. Yeah. Um, so I would love to be able to read. And I've got the French versions of his works. And I'd love to be able to read them. Yeah. Mm, that's that's interesting. Because you, you do do a lot of... Well, you're a writer yeah. yourself. Um, so I guess well, who's that? Who is that? A uh, Guy de Maupassant. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what sort of writing is it? Uh, short stories, like from the uh, Franco-Prussian War. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, he he died in like eight, 1890, I think. Yeah, but you still get like there's still wisdom in there. Oh, uh, but also they're funny. He was a he was a really? fun, yeah he was a funny writer. Like yeah, okay. The stories are funny. Mm. And I always think like, you know, what am I? What do I not get from those stories when I'm reading them in English? Yeah. Because mm. they, yeah. they're not being told the way he intended them. So I would like to be able to read them the way he intended for them to be told. Yeah. I'm going to try and learn a little bit of German. Yeah. Just because I'm catching up with, for all the listeners that keep keep along, I'm catching up with Lena, who I uh, met over in Thailand. Yeah. Uh, good friends. And we're going to Oktoberfest. So I'd like to be able to speak German. Yeah. Not being a, you, have I told you what the only German I know is? No. I told this actually on stage a few weeks ago, only because I was trying to do crowd work. It went well. Yeah. It, went, <laughs> it went okay. Uh, I tried to do crowd work for the first time, and I talked, and so someone was German, and I told them that the only German I know is Ein Duna Bitter, which is one Donna Kebab, please. Because <laughs> my brother told me when we rocked up, he's like, "You're going to be so drunk, just remember these three words." <laughs> And, I um, do know bit. It went well. I don't know how it got a laugh, but it went well. Um, but yeah, that's the only words I know. Yeah, yeah. and it's great because you. Oh no, no, no! Now you are. Um, you're on the carnival diet, aren't you? Uh, no, no. I've tried it a few times. Yeah. Uh, I was going to do it before I left, uh, but instead, I've just decided to eat. In my um, head, though, you're vegan. So yeah, the yeah, idea yeah, of, you, of yeah. you asking for a kebab, I'm like, what the fuck is that going to do? <laughs> yeah. You're going to starve. Yes. Yeah. No. Uh, at the time, I was as well. So, um, but I remember. Maybe it was just at the start. I can't remember. But I remember that trip going to Germany and knowing I had to ha- have sausages. Yeah. <laughs> and it was like, there was a month near the start where I was so like, you... no, stop, St- get your sausages in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> just afforded yourself that little luxury that of like, right, luxury. veganism is on pause. Yes. Because I'm in sausage country. Yeah, I ate all the, like, they had some, there's another meal they had with like sauerkraut or something. Um, like Sauerkraut is fucking vile. Oh, I'm sorry, but yeah, I, I didn't rate it, but the the meat that came with it, um, yeah, it was pretty nice. Do you know what I miss about traveling is trying all the like as soon as you get to a place yeah. and there's a thing that they do, yes, and then just going fuck it, I'll try that. Like I remember being in Cambodia and just eating um, snake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like being in Peru and eating alpaca. Yeah, like shit that you just never would eat. Yeah, no, actually, in Peru it was a guinea pig. Really? Yeah, I remember they're bringing out like a whole fucking roasted guinea pig. You could see the teeth still and had a carrot in its mouth. Fuck. It yeah. was fatty as shit, but... It's always my favourite thing to do yeah. is try the local stuff. Yeah. Um, and yeah, being vegetarian uh, didn't help. No. So um, I'm excited because I'll, I'll just eat whatever. Yeah. I'll, um, I'll try all the local stuff. Or, yeah, whatever. And then it's kind, of, it's kind of cool going by myself. I'm catching up it with is. friends yeah. um, along the way because we're going to a wedding. Um, in Italy, um, fuck Sorrento is expensive. <laughs> Holy shit! Um, and then, uh, yeah, heading over to Germany. Um, Germany's pretty expensive too. Yeah, it is. But um, I know people there, so at least I'm not spending yeah. money on accommodation. So. Yeah, that was good. But um, yeah, I do. I do. Germany, uh, Germany. Traveling itself is incredible. And I, w- if had my time again, I would have. Com- I would have completely packed up my bags when I was younger and just gone. 
That's what I did. I was like 26 and I was like, oh, I'm not going to stay in England anymore. Mm. And then I just left. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. had no... All I knew was that I didn't want to go back, but I didn't know what the what the plan was. Oh and I just I ended up traveling around the world for years before I found Australia. And it, I only got, it was because I met somebody in Southeast Asia, uh, a Scottish guy, and yeah. he was like, you can work in Australia for a year. And I was like, well, that's great because I've run out of money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I yeah. came here and I did that for a year and then I fucked off again. And, yeah. then, and then I came back uh, after another year and, and did, the, did the second year. Yeah. Yeah. People but like, and the, I love... So people... Were like, often can give Australia shit for having no culture, which we don't really have, like... Well, it's an amalgamation of all these different cultures. That's the whole point. It's like England. Yeah. Obviously, I'm from England. Yes. It's the same with us. People can go, like, oh, you don't have any food. You've mm. got no, like, your, your own cuisine. Like, yeah, not really, but yeah. that's fine because we have all these other yeah. cultures and everything in one boiling pot, and it's great. That's true. But I also like using it as a... Ba- it's, a it's a great base because when you go to these mm. other places... Everything is such a experience. It even is, just, yeah. even just something as simple as like, and I, this is why I can't wait to go to Austria. It's like a train through Austria. You're going through all these mountains yeah. and Alps, and and for us, it's incredible. We don't get that here. We have desert also, and also, hills. <laughs> you know. Also, architecture. Oh yeah, uh, uh, architecture in this country is pretty much non-existent. Yeah. And then you go to Europe and you see these beautiful cathedrals and shit, and they're like hundreds of years old. Yeah. You're like this is. It's the one thing that I miss. Like I went back to London a few years ago. Yeah. Um, I was about four or five years ago now and as soon as i got to to london i like put all my stuff in my mate's house i was staying at his house in um in the barbican like in the in, yeah, in yeah. central london yeah just went straight to st paul's cathedral I just stood outside and looked at it for about an hour yeah. went inside then came back outside ate lunch on the steps yeah like it's one of the most beautiful things i'm not a religious person at yeah. all it doesn't do anything to me in that way no but but it's beautiful mm. and this what like this why i'm so excited we're going to rome i'm only in rome for a day and a half before we head to the wedding venue. But people rag on Rome. People rag on Paris as well. They love doing it. Paris is absolutely Incredible. beautiful. Yeah. Gorgeous. Um, but if you go to Rome, it, like there's something about sitting in front of the Colosseum mm. or... I don't, I, I don't even remember the names of half of uh, the, the monuments and stuff. But like going and seeing them yeah. and you're like... You know, 2,000, 3,000 years ago, they were passing laws here. and Yeah. It's, it, I don't know, it creates... So much history. It creates like this um, fe- like feeling of... I, I remember FaceTiming my parents when I was in Rome. And I was like, I, don't, I, I can't explain this feeling of... I know what you mean though. It's, it's nostalgia for something that you don't... You shouldn't have nostalgia for because you uh, weren't around for it. Yes. It's not really part of your like your history, your heritage, your culture or anything. No. But for every, when you're there, mm. you get so immersed in it. Like I felt the same in South America, like with all the... You know, like the Quechua people and stuff like that. And I was just like, there's something about this that feels really mm. like, I don't know, welcoming and warm. And, and, and then you, you start looking into the Incas and stuff and, yeah. and going to these museums and, and seeing these places. Like when you look at the stones and stuff of, the, of how they built these places. Yeah. And you start really getting or just feeling like you're almost, yeah, like, I don't know. Saying at home sounds ridiculous, but you kind of do. It's like you can feel the history. Or yes. You can feel the, you can feel like... The, Everything that's built to what is now. Yeah, and you can feel it in the people that are, that are there in front of you, right? So, do you know what I mean? That's the yeah. connection that you have. Not just being there with all the yes. the things that you're seeing, but the people that are there too. Yeah, and uh, it, if you're constantly exposed to these things, you become numb to them. And that's, again, another reason why I love mm. having the base in yeah. Perth where, one, we can earn the money the contrast, isn't to it? give us the expense, to, yeah. you know, the, the, the money that we can go and experience these things. We're very lucky to have that opportunity. Um, and then it is a huge contextual change. Yeah. Like from going to seeing the fucking, what's our, our site, like King's Park. <laughs> you know, <it's> like <laughs> but also, and I have to say that I was talking to a friend of, uh, about this recently because I, for the first time in a while, I went up to um, to the beach because obviously the weather hasn't been great. I went up to a Luca yeah. beach. Oh, yeah. And I just wow, did Wow, fucking going to Geraldton. <laughs> <laughs> I just I did that coastal walk, the Mullaloo co- oh, uh, yeah. coastal walk. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it was the sun was sort of like setting. It was absolutely beautiful. Mm. And it reminded well, not that I need reminding because I do appreciate this place because I'm not from here, maybe. Yeah. But I was like, you know, people love to rag on Perth. Yeah. It's amazing. I've been really lucky. I've traveled a lot. I mm. came here for a reason and mm. I came back here for a reason several times. Yeah. And then decided to make it where I bring mm. my family up. Yeah. And this is where I'm going to gonna Pe- st- stay. People who rag on Perth are. Oh, dickheads. Fucking Let idiots. me say it, yeah. Yeah, yeah they're dickheads. They're, yeah, they're fucking idiots. I love idiots. it here so much. Because it's, be- it is one of the, it's one of the cleanest cities in the world that I've seen. Mm. It is beautiful. And 
and a great base. It's a great well, base to leave from. And you know, down the road you do you do have like places like Margaret River. Up the road you got X Oh, Margaret River can absolutely do one. Yeah, <laughs> you're not a fan. No, it's boring as fuck. <laughs> I love the ca- here's the thing, right? Margaret River for a couple of days, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But any more yeah. than that. Yeah, no. And I'm not just saying that because I don't do the whole winery thing or whatever, but it's just like every winery is exactly the same as yeah. well. It's it's not for me. Yeah. I love the caves, but again, yeah. How many how many times can you go to the caves exactly. before you're like, all oh, right, that's yeah. The that. But then I yeah, and then even just Southeast Asia, all these sorts of places mm. you can travel through. Travel is fucking incredible. And yeah, to have the opportunity to do all that sort of stuff. And you know. as you say, like the, having this as a base, like that's what I did when I when I first got here. I got a job on a farm and I was earning more money doing that than like I'd ever earned back home yeah. in England doing my full time job than my friends were currently earning as well. And I was just on a farm yeah. feeding horses yeah. and driving hay bales out in a tractor. So it was like it was fun as well. Yeah. I loved I actually loved that job. Yeah. I'm I, I am so excited about this trip because mm. it is nice getaway. And like I said, I have been tired almost, like not unmotivated. Yeah, just tired. It's been a big year. Yeah, like a, a lot. Reset. It's been a lot of work, a lot of podcast. I think um, everyone can attest to that. We've been doing a lot of work with that. Um, and, and my, my mum's health stuff. Like I had a lot, a big year. And this week I was just like, I just, I need to go. I need to go rest. But I'm also filled with this anxiety of leaving my daughter. And it's I not was because about to say, like, how long are you going for? Just, uh, I think I'm gone for 18, 19 days. I can't leave for too long because yeah. I, I can't leave my daughter too I long. Know, it's hard. And it's, and it's one, it's not quite fair on Steph to just, here you go, fucking deal with her. Because yeah. um, that's tough as well, being yeah. a single parent, like only one responsible. That's that's challenging in itself as well. Um, but also, I just couldn't be away for that no, long. It's but this hard. I've done it once and I did not yeah, do it well. I, I <sighs> I'm struggling, so I struggle with this all the time, just g- in general life. Just to, like going to a gig. If she's asleep in in bed, mm. I still feel guilty that I'm at a gig. She's not. I can't do anything with her. I can't play with yeah. her. I can't be a parent. Yeah. So there's this. Um, I don't know what. I, that's something I have to deal with. Um, <clears throat> because well, I think it's because you know how valuable presence is. Yeah, but yes, yeah, c- correct. But there's also like. Um, the concept of, you know, you can love something so much you can squeeze the life out of it. You know, you give the bay, mm. you, you give a child a, um, you know, a fluffy little bunny rabbit, and they love it so much that they squeeze it so much that they kill it. And uh, I'd I f- love to see that. That'd be hilarious. <laughs> 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 they love it so much they twist the head until it comes off. <laughs> but the, the that idea of like, you know, squeezing the life out of something you love mm. so much. Um, you can hinder there. I'm sorry, I can't get an image of Scott, Scott <laughs> eating, eating, eating his rabbit she's just killed <laughs> out of my mind. Poor so. Scott here. <laughs> um, but no, I, yeah, no, I hear you. You don't want to hinder their, their experiences and their growth. Yeah. Um, so I do. I have to let go of wanting to always be there. And all. Like the other day, Steph said, um, I remember she called me up, she's like, oh, I've got a baby shower on, can you just look after it for a couple of hours? And I'm, I'm, I love that. And mm. Same with Steph, she'll do that for me as well. We're really good like that. And um, I was fucking chuffed. I was like, yes, it's not my weekend, but I get a couple yeah. of hours extra with my daughter. And then um, she's, then Steph said, oh, my sister can look after her if you're busy as well. Mm. And my sister has four, ki- her sister has four kids. And I went, mm. that's more fun for Scotty. Is that what you're thinking? Yeah. yeah. And I was, I had to, I had to say to Steph, I really want to, but I think Scotty will appreciate playing with her cousins more. more I'll yeah. be selfish and take her to the beach by myself or something like that. Yeah. Um, so yes, give her to Sam. Yeah. I'm sorry. So and and it's hard. Like I'm I'm getting better at letting go of those sorts of things. And fuck, like I think I I can't remember if I said this on the pod, but it was like school holidays. You know, uh, we we had a great school holidays. I love the fact that I can be the dad and stay at home, and Same. we're going to go. That do was this always the goal. Yeah, always it goal. has always been my goal. And I realized the other day on the school holidays that that's not necessarily one what she needs or what she wants. wants. Yeah, she does want time with her dad. But it was we were telling a story. I was telling her a story before we went to bed, and then I said, "All right, finished up, kissed her good night," and she said, "Daddy, I miss my friends." And I went, oh my God, <laughs> I'm heartbroken. Yeah. I've been selfish keeping you to myself. And you're like, your friends have all died. I li- <laughs> <laughs> Just I, me and you, kiddo. <laughs> I, I literally called up my um, 
my neighbours who uh, shared a property behind and uh, they also have a farm in York and I called them up and I said, are you guys coming back with your kids yeah. anytime soon? And they're like, we're here tomorrow. And I was like, what a weird fake. call that would have been. Like, I need children. Do you have any children I can have? <laughs> but they were like, yes, we're here. And I was like, oh, fuck. She needs to play with some other kids. I've been so selfish yeah. as a parent. Like, that sounds like I'm being a good dad, but no, I've, I've been selfish. She, she needs other kids to yeah. thrive. She needs that connection with ki- and the smile that she gets on her face playing with other kids kills me because I don't get that smile. <laughs> I do everything to be that smile, but I I yeah. don't get it. But uh, yeah, so that's something I'm going to have to do. part of the with. job though, isn't it? It is. Um, and uh, yeah, it's something I'm, uh, I'm dealing with. And so like letting... I know the first two days in Austria mm. when I'm by myself and you have those two hours where you're just like, I'll be like, oh, I want my daughter. I want to yeah. be back. Um, as soon as I catch up with Matt and Carly, my neighbours, um, in Venice and then we're adventuring, it'll be a lot easier to deal with. We'll be having fun and yeah. I'll still miss Scotty, but yeah, it'll course. be like it serves as a distraction. But i just got to let go. And She'll miss you as well, but yeah. it's you know, a good um, thing. Yeah, well, you can't... You don't want to be that guy who's like, I can't fucking wait to get away from my responsibilities or I can't wait to... Do you know what I mean? There's plenty of those around. You don't want to be that guy. No, I'm definitely not that guy. Oh, I know you're not that guy. That's what I mean. Like, For for as many people as you can probably think of that are that person, Mm. like, what kind of fucking life is that? Yeah, it's... um, I understand... And that's not to say that. I understand people wanting a break. Like, hey, I need a weekend away. Let's go away without the kids. Yeah. For us or something like that. That's fine. But yeah, those people are like, ah, oh, fuck. Yeah, like anything to get, mm. do you know what I mean? But I don't think there's many out there. There's, there's a few, I'm sure. But fuck, it makes me think about FIFO workers. Yeah. And how much, like, that must... Before my career, like, took off, yeah. like, I was... It was probably about a year or so before Oscar was born, mm. um, my son Oscar. And I thought about doing FIFO because I was, I was working in a factory at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I hadn't really started making any money at all from, from joke writing or any of that stuff. I wasn't writing yeah. on shows or anything and i thought well, what do i do i need i need to make more money mm. and then i brought it up to my wife about the fifo thing and then she was like you'll be away like during you know the pregnancy mm. there'll be you know big chunks of that if it, if it goes to plan yeah um you'll be away during the pregnancy and then there'll be just you know you'll be ar- you'll be home for like half the year essentially yeah and i was like oh i'd rather be poor yeah i would genuinely would rather fucking have to scrimp and scrave, uh, scrimp and scrape, scrimp and save to to make ends meet. And mm. you know, it's not to say that I, you know, I know how important money is, of course. But yeah. I, as I said to you, like you, you obviously know how important pre- uh, being present is, and that's why yeah. you feel that way when you're at a gig. And, and uh, yeah, she's asleep, mm. but you know that just being there mm. is important. Mm-hmm. And that was the thing. That was the I was just like, ah, fuck it, I'm not doing that. Yeah, I definitely, and I've said this a lot. Oh, I would definitely rather pinch pennies yeah. and be there present with my daughter or fucking even just for myself. Because that's the thing that they remember as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but <clears throat> I don't know. Like, it's actually, yeah, considering it's Father's Day coming up, we can keep talking father and parenting. Because I was going to say as well, actually, sorry, just on, no, the, on, the, on the topic of, um, of like the fatigue thing, I think a big part of, of that, it comes from when you do something like this full time, yeah. you forget to take your foot off. Oh yeah, because one, you're always competing in that space. Like we, I know we have different jobs and stuff, but yeah. it's still in that like creative space mm. where you know you constantly have to be yeah. like on your game, yeah. and you have to be relevant. And you are like, I'm always working when I'm not even working. Like, mm. You know what I mean? Like I, even if it's research to make the next thing that I'm doing easier, or yep. if I'm you know writing on something else, you, you always you just forget because you love it as well. So mm. you forget that this is this is your job now yeah. and that normal people take a break. Yeah. But you they think do. like, well, I love this. So why would I take a break from it? Yeah. For your well, I'm even think like uh, f- that's causing almost anxiety. The fact that um, we won't have any episodes going, getting done while I'm away. Yeah. <coughs> Potentially Delby can come and record an audio version. No, that's fine. No, um, I'm <laughs> kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, he could potentially record some audio. Yeah, he can just do that, what you're doing now. But the straight away that's in my head yeah. is like, how can I next week when Delby gets back, can we do uh, two episodes in one day? So I've got one to release yeah. that day and then one to release the week after and then potentially it's just one week without an episode. Or, yeah, or know, he, but he comes in and interviews somebody and it's, yeah. you know, it's just a... It's also sponsors. Doing. Yeah. So obviously these guys are doing wonders for us, but um, we got like a time-sensitive sponsorship, which you would have heard at the start for True yeah. Grit. You know, like it's only for a mo- it's, it's like a month and a half away or um, something like that. Um 
and those sorts of things and I'm like conscious of that as well. Mm. So th- there's a few things um, that go in my head when it comes to that and it becomes almost overwhelming considering I still got to plan me trip things yeah. that I've got to do. Like I need to make sure I've got enough. We're trying to plan this show with, you know, sell mm. tickets to the show at Sydney to finish off to make sure that's valuable because if if we don't sell the tickets, um, enough tickets to that show, it's almost – I've changed my whole Europe trip for this. Yeah. Um, uh, and so it has like and we were, yeah it's just um it's one of those things where everything becomes overwhelming. But yeah. you have to remember that for as overwhelming as it can be, mm. that this was the this is the goal or at least this is like as you were saying this is the the path to yeah. the next thing. It beats the hell out of doing something that you don't love. I well that's true. So <laughs> regardless of how overwhelming it is, it's you know it's, it's part of it. It's part of the, I guess the sacrifice of it too. But it's yeah. you're lucky to be doing the thing that you love doing. Yeah. It's uh, yeah. There's there's and the I'm not saying don't ever take a break. By the way, that's not no, what I'm saying. No, no. I, I just mean the you know the the little things that can make it difficult along the way. They're just as important. Yes, no, hundred um, percent. I'm Ooh. that shine is coming back on me. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, um, I am ready. Um, I do. I'm I'm pretty. I know when I get back, mm. there'll be this fire. Yeah, like fire litten. Because yeah, you'll miss lit. you'll miss not doing this and you'll miss not being I here. I love yeah. this, of course. I love this, and next week will be fun. It's two hundredth episode next week, is it? Which is um, pretty crazy to think. So the show's been going for what, three years, three, three and a bit. Or? It's actually been going for uh, in in February. Next Why February. do I think because I did it three years ago? Yeah, it's been going yeah. three years. I was the first. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, when it, when generally, generally, to be fair, that's sort of when it started. Started. Yeah, I think we did maybe 15 episodes over like the f- two years prior. So j- February, okay. next February will be yeah. five years yeah. um, that we've been doing this. And then I reckon for the first two years, we did maybe 15, maybe, yeah, okay. s- maybe 20 episodes. Yeah. Um, so it was just like a here and there. And then w- during COVID, it was COVID. Yeah. Knuckled down and went, fuck it, we've got nothing else to do. Let's do an episode a week. Um, it's been honestly it's been I know I've said this to you as well but it has been inspiring to watch mm. take it from what it was to what it is Thank and because you. I know you I know you're not done no no it's it, it's what it's it's kind of hard like cause I, I was talking to Pinder about this yesterday being in a podcast is cringy as especially as a straight white male and the topics we're talking about yeah, but you're not that straight <laughs> <laughs> Um, Plus, you fix the camera, so you're not even that white. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm a bit. I'm. I'm, I'm a bit tanny, tanny. Yeah, you're tanny. Um, yeah. The, the, the. I guess the cringe factor. You have to be okay with it. It's yeah. the same. And Pinder was saying this yesterday. And I really, actually, this made me feel a lot more better about it. Um, you like that with comedy is cringe. Doing stand-up comedy is cringe. Uh, I disagree. To I what? understand what you're saying. I know where you're going with it yeah, too, yeah, but yeah. I, d- I disagree. I'm always proud. Yeah, oh, of course. And same same as I am with this. Um, but you're going to get the haters no matter what. You're going to get people going, another white guy thinking he can say something on the podcast. Mm. And I'll, you know, I'll talk about spirituality or I'll talk about getting healthy or I'll fucking anything, you know, Joe Rogan yeah. style. And you start going, there will be people who go, come, you know. But only because there's more people listening. And it's the same with, you know, if you have a, a clip out there of a, you know, yeah. a stand up bit mm-hmm. and it's great, like yeah. Pinder does. Pinder, yes. has it, Pinder has one of his jokes, one of his best jokes as well. I'll, I'll Which add. I'm so glad he finally did because that joke does. It's, it's amazing. The, yes. But it, and it has like about a million views ish on mm-hmm. Instagram, I think on, on, uh, Facebook as well it's, yep. ta- it's taken off but you know that as soon as something goes viral yes. there's just as many well there's more people who are outspoken about what they don't like about it Yes, because there's always going to be that yep. and this is a point <coughs> we have to make about our stuff and I'm going to I've stopped <sighs> I've stopped poking the bear mm. when it comes to that because I used to poke the bear for f- so initially I reckon we used to get sucked in to bad comments mm. We'd be like, fuck you. And yeah. we'd, we'd fight back with them. Yeah, yeah. Then it became a bit of fun. Yeah. It became, we're going to poke the bear and just keep doing it for, for our fun. Yeah. Um, just to, like, these people are clearly here to just be assholes. Uh, then it, it's progressed to now, if someone disagrees with us, I'll be like, well, 
let's have an open dialogue and let's have some discourse because I would like to understand why you disagree with us on this or whatever. Um, I think that's where we differ because if it was me, I'd just be like, well, this isn't for you. Yeah. I really don't give a shit yeah. if you don't agree with my spirituality or my religious yes. beliefs or whatever. I don't care. Yes. I'm so not asking for you to agree with me. I'm just speaking. Yes. So that has changed again now for us. We've oh. now moved to... I've I've moved. Yeah. Delby doesn't. <laughs> Delby <laughs> hates things. But uh, I've moved to... Eh, I don't care. Yeah. I'll I'll usually just comment an emoji back generally. Yeah. Um, Social, um, social media was a real beneficial tool for me to learn that mm. process because when you, as you gain followers and you get to a certain point where... Yeah, because you've got a lot of Twitter followers. How many followers on Twitter? Uh, 130, I think. 130,000. So that's a lot of people or like just straight up without the organic... Yeah, but Instagram's like the same now too. Instagram's like 100 and something thousand. Wow. So... But and, and I'm going to collab with you on this. <laughs> <laughs> but people are, are the same. Like, it doesn't matter what the platform is. Yeah. People will always have a, an, an opinion on what you've done. Even if it's the most simplistic joke, either someone's going to get offended by it, mm. somebody's going to tell you it's not funny. Um, and then similarly, you'll have people telling you it is funny. And I realise that you just have to let it be. Yes. I, yeah. was, I was happy enough to put it out there. So there we go. This yeah. is for you guys. And some of you will like it. Some of you will hate it. I really don't give a shit. And that's the thing... Uh, um, we have to be better with, um, specifically as a podcast. If we're that podcast who says, stop being offended, it's just a fucking joke, blah, blah, blah. Then you can't be offended we by people. We can't be offended by people. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, so it's, it's like the, you know, both ways. You know, right to free speech and all this sort of stuff. Yeah, right? so well, it has to be everyone's speech. It can't just be the stuff that you agree with. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Otherwise, what's the point? So, uh, yeah, we're getting a lot better at that. Just letting go, not caring. Well, um, it's hard too because it's somebody like I, from the other point. I get it because it's it's difficult when you're putting energy and effort into something and you're proud of it, and yeah. then some cunt in the, ba- in the background <laughs> is going, <laughs> "Yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah." It's true. All right, where's your podcast then, dickhead? Yeah, well, that's I mean? generally like <laughs> that. Delby, Delby will get on in the comments <laughs> and he'll be like, "You're welcome to start your own podcast." Yeah, where's your show? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, and I, I, I'm the same. I feel like that as well, but. Uh, yeah, we're definitely getting better at that. And I just, um, we bring it on ourselves. It is our karma, yeah. as uh, Alan Watts would say. It's our karma. If if I am putting out polarizing clips purposefully, mm. because I know it gets more traction and it gets us um, more views and whatever, um, even if we still agree with what we're saying, like yeah. I've chosen to put that out there. Also um, as well, you do this so frequently that people that listen that don't know you yes. do feel like they know you. So yes. they feel like they're allowed to say certain things to you that they wouldn't mm-hmm. say otherwise. Mm. Yeah, that idea of... <coughs> uh, There'll be people out there that have listened to this for a really long time that you've never met and yes. never interacted with. But mm. in their mind, mm. they refer to you as Branchy and Delby and they think they know lots of stuff. And I'm not saying that they don't, by the way. Because <laughs> they do. You've yeah. given them a lot. Yes. But it also, I think, gives them license... To or they think it gives them license to say what they want sometimes? It, de- it definitely does. Um, but um, uh, it's, it's uh, I think, I, and I've said this several times, it's very vulnerable and exposing being as open and honest as we are mm. on this podcast and then meeting people who listen to every episode, not just clips, they listen to the whole things. Yeah. And then you're like, that. yeah, they do. They know a lot about you. They know a lot about your opinions on things. And you don't know whether their opinion on Actuals, your opinion yeah. <laughs> is uh, is yeah similar. So it does become like you're treading water until you're like, do you watch clips or do you listen to the podcast? Because if you listen to the podcast, you probably think similar similarly to me, yeah. and you're not going to hate on me. But um, you know, I get worried. You know, I have a daughter. I've got you know certain people in my life that I don't. N- necessarily know yeah. very well that have now i know they've seen some of our clips and um, yeah they'll be like oh i didn't know he was like that or yeah correct so it does it's pretty difficult but um i don't know at the end of the day more our biggest message is always um having an open dialogue on things that you don't necessarily agree with yeah. and i think sometimes if you have a conversation uh openly and honestly about whatever the topic eventually the shit gets filtered out. Like if you're, yeah. what you're saying is incorrect, someone can very clearly go, no, this is incorrect because of this. Yeah. And then you'll be like, hmm, okay. And if anything, it's going to make it clearer what's correct and what's not. Mm. There are people who do 
and we're like this echo chambers. We yeah, can we be, all are. Yeah, um, it's difficult sometimes. You will just regurgitate something you've heard. Yeah, I've, I'm definitely guilty of that in the past. It's, again, getting, we all are because confirmation bias is something that we all mm. like. We look for it all the time, yeah. and even you know, we I think we used to look for it a lot more, and now we just fed it anyway. I attempt, I attempt mm. to not take on anything anymore. Like uh, read, or sorry, watch anyone's content and take on their opinions and their philosophies yeah. because you are taking on someone else's thoughts and instead I'll try and read, which is st- similar to listening to someone, but this is the thing. read the stats or read the, the, the facts about a certain situation and then formulate my opinion yeah. itself. Because there's sometimes, I've had an opinion about something for years and years and years and never vocalised it. Mm. And then you hear it and it just, everyone's like, yes. And you're like, ah, oh, I should yeah. have been saying this all along. I should have just yeah. been... So just uh, my, some people's way of thinking... And it also, that doesn't mean your way of thinking doesn't change over the years. Yeah, so important. Because I could have a clip from four years ago. Yeah, you'd be like, well, that's not my opinion anymore. I, no. don't, I don't believe that anymore. Yeah. and yeah. Some For people, example, you used to be a vegan. Yes. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. And um, I would have, I would have said very good things about veganism... And the health benefits. Yeah. Now I would question it. Well, you said to me the other night that all vegans are the scum of the earth. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, He'll <true>. cut that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a... Uh, it, yeah, the fact that our opinions can change and evolve over the years. Yeah. What? It's incredible as well. It is. Um, it does make you go, what am I saying now? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Am I going to look back and go, you fucking dickhead? But that's fine. Yeah. You just, that's the thing. You just got to be fine with it. A hundred percent. You just got to go, well, this is what we do. Mm. And everything is like in the moment. Like, So I was on here a few months back or whatever. And yep. we uh, we were talking about ayahuasca. Yeah. And the, um, that story went very well as well. Well, the, the childhood trauma stuff is something that I don't talk about with, especially with people. Like I've met, I've talked about it on social media because mm. I know that, in the same way that um, when I first found out about Billy Connolly and what he went through as a child and then I saw that he was this man on stage mm. being happy and funny, I found that inspiring. I was like, well, there's someone yeah. who went through something I assume similar mm. and has come out of it the other side, a very happy individual. He's, you know, he's on stage laughing and saying swear words. Right? Yeah. That to me was every, <laughs> everything. Yeah. And so thinking that I could potentially, if I shared my story, do the same sort of thing. Mm. But what I forget is that there are people very close to me that don't know any of that stuff. Mm. And then I talk about it on a podcast and then they hear it. And it's, you know, the messages then start coming. It's like, I had no idea. It's like, well, why, why would you? It's not, I don't know. It's it, it, it's in mm. this kind of space, it, it felt like the thing to talk to you about. Yeah. I don't know why. Yeah. I, do, I don't know why. I, I often get the <coughs> feedback from guests mm. that they feel comfortable around me and Delby. They yeah. feel like it's a fun I did. I wouldn't have said that easy, to like anyway. yeah. yeah. Easy and um and like a safe environment. Even though they're saying it to thousands of people. Yeah. Potentially millions if the clip goes really well. Really yeah. well. Yeah. You know, it can it, they can feel safe, which is a really it's a, a really nice feedback that we get. We also always get that was so much fun. Yeah. That is a very common feedback that we yeah. get. And I think it is. I think it's a good way to... Me and Pinder accidentally come up with a thing. It's uh, listen, learn and laugh. <laughs> the, the Hard Yarns podcast. Get fucked. <laughs> <laughs> get that tattooed on you. <laughs> Mate, I've got something worse. i got... You know, what is, can the listener say it? It says live in the moment. Do you know, t- do you know how I got that? Uh, well, you were probably living in the moment at the time and thought this would look good. Certainly. <laughs> I was about 48 tequilas deep in Thailand. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I remember having this, and I think I've said it on the pod, It's uh, so sorry for the listeners who might have heard it. Um, I remember um, it was this moment where we were all at the the, kang- the kangaroo bar or the roo bar in, uh, in Patong on Bangla Road, which is not the... Greatest establishment, but we love it. It's so good. And I just remember this moment where we're all fucking pissed. There was about 30 of us. And I just looked around. I was like, these are the, that hell nostalgic cliche. These are the moments we've got to <laughs> savour, guys. 
And I was nearly in tears. And then the boys reckon I just disappeared. <laughs> and I woke up with this <laughs> the next morning. At least it's the speech impediment cleared up. I mean, <laughs> that's, that's good. Well, that's probably um, what happens after 48 tequilas. Oh, sure. And this is the thing. So, uh, like, alcohol, um, I don't... I, I, I'm starting to be of the elk of where you're going to be, where you're at. You don't drink at all. No, I haven't drunk in 11 years. I worked out the other day. Is that big? So, one, one, I'm interested. One, do you think it's just better to not drink? Yep. Just for me. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. For me personally. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I wouldn't suggest Wolfie gives up alcohol. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've seen him not drink. I have too. When, and I said this to him yesterday. I remember seeing him after one month of yeah. no booze and no cigarettes. Yeah. And he was like, dude, I've done it. I've, I've, I'm sober. I've, <laughs> I haven't had alcohol in a month. And then he goes, and this is the best part. And he goes, I fucking hate it. Because <laughs> I'm so unhappy. I love alcohol. Mate, he's uh, up. His, what's the word? Not flow state, but his. Um, his, he was just so rapid fire on when he was sober. Not that he's not when he's drinking. I mean, look, he's drinking now. He's just seen him last night. He was phenomenal. Yeah, at Guildford? Yeah. Um, what's the... Uh, yeah. Mm, I mean, I'm, I'm interested to see if I can do this non-drinking thing. But before we go back to that, what, uh, yeah, what is the Guildford like? Oh, the Guildford's great. It was, it was about nearly 100 people in last night. It was yeah. fantastic. Yeah, sick. It's a great room. I think I'm on there next month yeah, or like the month sick. whenever I'm back. Yeah, okay. Um, October. Maybe there's a show in October okay. or something like that. I can't remember. I think it's monthly, but they he's pushing to, to make it a bit more frequently. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It looks like a good room. It's great, man. Yeah. Such a good space. I, I do love what Xavier's doing. He's got the ECC. But he keeps putting his mark on these spaces and making it like very. It's, it's kind of like with the comedy lounge, how the, the the branding is not just a thing that you trust now. It's also a thing that you go like, well, I know what goes into it too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, like when when Johnny was like, oh, we're opening a room in Frio. Instantly, you go, well, it's going to be amazing. Yeah, we know it's going to be amazing. And yeah. now when Grassroots do it, the they're like, okay, well, we know this is going to be a good room. Do you, the only thing about the Frio room. <clears throat> And I love it. The fucking setup is incredible. Mm. It looks so good. I don't know if you notice this. Now, the, anyone who's been in the crowd wouldn't notice this, but the, the comedians certainly do. And it was said to me before I went on stage, just be mindful of it. Could you hear the hum? No. There's a hum, like a like a like a like a electric hum above your head where the comedian stands. You can I could hear it notably, and I was like, it was initially it was a little distracting. Mm. Because you start thinking, I wonder if the crowd can hear that. And then you, I would take a step closer towards the front of the stage and it would sort of half disappear. But I can't believe it's just just that little one spot and there's a bit of a, an know, electric I hum. Yeah, I don't know if it's been uh, fixed since, but I noticed it. I was told... I think you've been on more recently than I yes, have. Yes. I'm, yeah. I'm back there in a couple of weeks. Oh, yeah? But I... Yeah. I don't know if that's been fixed or no. It, 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 it didn't affect the show. I it was just it like initially I just went, oh, what's that little... I'm only sure I've done that room three times now, like three weekends, and really? I have, I've never noticed any yeah, anything. Okay. I, lo- I love that room. I loved it. The first night I did not like it, but no one liked it. <laughs> no. Fridays, are get, they will get better as they fill. Yeah. That's the problem with that space. It's, it's you're, you're in a warehouse, essentially, and, and when it's not filled... So it's well, it was filled. It was, was it? It was On filled. The, it was very... Yeah. It was a heavy crowd, but it was... Heavy sourced. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. They were the drunk, problem. loud, um, not listening. Yeah. Um, there was something. There was a vibe around the room. Shin sort of went Alcohol a bit too again. hard. At, yeah, 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 true. Yeah, but Shin went a bit too hard. Yeah, I heard and he that. said it, he was like, yeah, yeah. when I just went too hard. Yeah, uh, it, it fucked the vibe. Uh, but the next morning, the next night, he Killed. nailed it. Yeah. And then I didn't. I could have said anything. And don't you love those gigs? They almost feel like cheat codes. <sighs> It was inc- it was so it was so relieving because yeah. it was my first pro show for Comedy Lounge, yeah. any sort of Comedy Lounge venue, and it was a it was a relief. Mm. I was a nervous after the Friday night show because it's like you, you didn't do very well, but then no one did well. Yeah, no one did great. Even the um, the headliners were like, yeah, not struggling, but just it wasn't incredible. Yeah, um, and then yeah, the Saturday, uh, and then yeah. It was awesome. So I was very, very happy. It's actually, it's lit a fire in me, but it's also, it's, it's hindered me because now I w- I'm almost, I almost don't want to do shows unless I've got something new to say. Just a couple of new ones. Well, and that's, uh, that's a good thing. I mean, <laughs> I, over the last probably year, 
Yeah, I'd say like the last 12 months, I've started treating open mics a little differently. Yes. Because I used I to... I certainly need to. But my, my my thing used to be like, oh, this should all be new. Like, you should just be doing new all the time. And oh, then yeah, yeah, yeah. I was yeah. like, well, what's the point in me, you know, every time I get up doing five minutes of material or even even say like, for, you know, say like you open and close on something that, that yeah. works to, yes. to get the trust, but you do all new in the middle. I'm like, if I'm not going to like... Co- do that again and again mm-hmm. and again and again till I get it to the point where okay this can now go in the club set. Why mm-hmm. am I do, why am I doing it? Yeah. And I realized I was doing it for you lot. I was doing it for my peers because I thought like oh people want to see me do. No one gives a fuck. Yeah. But in my head I'm like oh everyone wants to see me do new. Yeah. No one cares what I'm doing. No. They're not watching. No. I you always think the com- other comedians are watching. They're not. I watch Wolfie. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> no, there are so there are some there are some acts that I will uh, you know if they're on doesn't matter where in the in, in the night I'm like all right well if he's on I'm staying I'm going to watch yeah. it and Wolfie is one of those guys. Yeah. It's interesting. Like, so I've done. I had a good chat with Shin. Actually, he gave mm. me some really good advice. It's interesting because I don't take too much advice from anyone yeah i take a pinch from anyone who gives advice i think that's the best way because ultimately you know what you you know you have to trust that you know what you're doing because shin gave me some very good advice uh but it's very shin advice very him as well and i'm not that style of comedian so i will take a lot of on of what he said yeah but it did make me go uh, i'm gonna stop doing gong because i was Mm. getting through every time doing really well not one gong plate going up um and but he made a point. He's like, you're like a robot. You're doing that same little mm. three minutes. It works. But like, you know, just if I, uh, the reason the next time I do gong, I'll play around and do some shit that I'm willing to not do well with. I even said to Johnny after I said, I did really well, but I feel shit about it. Yeah. And he's like, well, yeah, that, you did well, mate, but just like, yeah, just don't be afraid to fail. Just do it. <laughs> because that, that's the other thing, isn't it? It's, it's also knowing to, you know, say for example, you go do an open mic don't go and just do like your your bangers. Don't go do your club set because this is an open mic. So what are you like you? Yeah. The thing that I've I've tried to st- to do more of is to you know take out a minute or two and then put mm. in a, like a new a few new bits here yeah. and there. Like last night at Guildford, it was about how you finding 40, that forty percent new. I would say thirty oh, to forty yeah. percent new. Um, some of it that I just wrote yesterday with Wolfie. Yeah. So I was like, I was excited to yeah. do it. And excited. how good is it when it pays off? Oh man, and it did as well. And it was th- that that was the that was the great part. I was just like, okay, so because it, you know, you sometimes you forget that you you do know what you're doing yes. to an extent. You don't want to admit. You don't want to be like, oh, I'm good at this. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Because you know, most of the time you feel like you're not. <laughs> like you, yeah, yeah. Because like I have no idea what I'm doing. No. I don't know. What, I don't know what works. Blah no. blah blah. But then you get you know you, you get to try new stuff and you have faith in it and it works. Sometimes it doesn't, but yeah. that's the that's the thing that I'm trying to do now with with open mics is you know it doesn't all need to be new, but yeah, no. you do do work on something, mm. work on a new bit at least, and then try and get that to the point where you go right, this is potentially ready now to be part of your ten or your fifteen for a club set. Yeah, and that's what I'm starting to do as a <coughs> uh, at the open mic shows, which is generally mo- almost all of my sets, uh, mm. all still open mic rooms or you know, tester rooms. Um, so I'm basically, I'm committing to every time I do one of those sorts of rooms, it'll be, there'll be two to three minutes in the middle that is brand new or, you know, I've been working on for a week or two, you know. Yeah, or trying. something that you are Which I did last doing. time at ECC. Um, but it didn't, uh, it went okay. It went yeah. okay. But like, that's the first joke, that I, new joke that I've told in a while where it didn't go hugely well like okay. the way I wanted the last yeah. two or three jokes I've written the first time and ever since like never fail yeah. like they're just they've gone really well there's like three or four of them bang 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 and they're gone really so that fir- that one that I, t- I was working on the other night at ECC was the first time I went it's like an ego check it's like yeah. nah you're not going to get a banger every time you write a joke yeah. and it went okay there were bits in it so I didn't need to really con- condense it and bring it down but and sometimes it's just telling it differently as well and again that's the other thing with an open mic you can take a bit that you do at the moment that mm. you know works mm. and tell it differently or mm. play with the ordering or whatever and like you know you'll find something else in there as you do yeah. that because it, you know you say about being like a robot yeah. i i have a meticulous script in my head yes that i i have it so meticulous because i want to be able to deviate from it if i need to and then come back to it and not lose my place and not, you know, I never want to be that guy going, oh, where was I? What was I? Yeah. Like, I don't want to do that. Yeah. So I make sure that I know every beat of every single joke, which mm. does include the inflections and everything else. But yes. It also means that 
if I want to, or if I need to, or if I get derailed by whatever, then it doesn't matter. I just come yeah. back to where I was. That is for me my my security as well. Yeah, knowing exactly how I'm going to tell my set, when I tell a joke, how I tell a joke, yeah. what tone of voice, what cadence I have, and that was probably some of the that was some of the feedback that Shin gave me. It's yeah, like it doesn't always have to be the same. No, and I think that's the the problem with yeah, you do you if it becomes so autonomous or or even if you don't like we've all got jokes we're sick of telling. Yes. You can get to the punchline in different ways. Exactly. Yeah, which is what Shin said. He's like, mm. you got, you know, the punchline. I'm not that kind of guy yet. Like, I'm not that kind Same. of comedian. I'm not that guy either. And really, let's just let's be totally honest. I've been doing stand up really two years, but I had about a year and a half off in mm. between that. So I've been been doing it for like six months. Yeah, six months of doing, well, seven or eight months of stand up. That's all I've been doing. So I'm I'm pretty raw. Yeah. Um, so I'm more just about getting stage time and presence and being happy and comfortable on stage, which is I think I'm getting there. Um, I don't get nervous on stage ever anymore, even when I try a new joke. I don't get nervous on the stage. I get nervous everything around it, like all the build up, yeah, the, the whole day beforehand, yeah, getting yeah, yeah. on the stage. Doesn't matter if it's the windmill or if it's the lounge. Not oh. that I'm saying the windmill shit. <laughs> <laughs> not what I'm going for here. Yeah, but like, yeah. But do you yeah. know what I mean? It doesn't matter the the, the sort of how yeah. good the gig is or whatever. It, I I still feel exactly the same. So when I that you know when I do get the nerves for that sort of stuff, if I'm trying a joke that I don't quite know what I'm going to do, yeah, which I did at ECC, I didn't feel nervous. I just felt like that. You know those little butterflies that you used to get when you're very... Well, used to get, like I've been fucking in the game for ages. <laughs> um, like, But when I very first started, those butterflies were heightened and huge and uh, everything. Nothing could get rid of it. Yeah. Whereas now it's like, yeah, I'm all good. I'll just right. go up and tell my joke. It's fine. I envy that But this bit. one, um, that little... Uh, when I have a new piece, a new joke, mm. yeah, I get a little bit nervous, a little bit butterfly but I get super nervous... When I am unstructured, so the, I hosted Triple M um, Quiz Night at Pr- Crown the other night. Bit yeah, of pressure because the there's a bit of pressure because Triple M are very um, they're PG. You know, it's a yeah. it's a mainstream thing. So they said just keep it. With, you know, you can be loose, have a bit of fun, but just keep don't it reasonable. Yeah, yeah, don't, yeah. Try not to swear. Blah blah blah. It's pretty standard. You know, be yeah. like uh, be like morning radio, yeah. which is easy. I, I was like, that's fine. I can play with that and then crowns very rigid with what you can and can't say yeah so i was like fuck i can't even really be loose um and i i actually felt quite nervous about that one yeah. specifically because i just didn't know relax what, uh, yeah. yeah and i could you do relax you might call them all pricks or yeah, yeah. well yeah like it, it's pretty funny because i was um i was trying my hardest not to mention gambling not to mention drinking not to swear yeah. and then danny green comes on and he's like Fucking shit, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and then like, he said fuck like about six times in his first sentence. And then he talked about drinking the bar dry and like you've just spoken about drinking <laughs> and sworn seven times. But no one's going to say fucking shit because you're Danny Green and you're yeah. going to punch someone's head in. But um, <laughs> uh, yeah, those sorts of gigs, that, that gets the nerves going. The uncertainty, the unknown the definitely nerves. gets the nerves. And I like the nerves yeah because they keep you on your toes they keep you mm. focused the nerves that i had when i opened for pinder and wolfie on mm-hmm. my birthday three years ago yeah i still get them that's exactly how i feel pretty much every gig okay um i didn't i'm not saying i don't get nervous like the, the first lounge gig on the friday yeah. i was nervous but not nervous to go up and tell my jokes nervous i just wanted it to go well yeah that's all I didn't care about. But that's ca- all it ever is, isn't it? Like on the, on those first gigs that I did, I wasn't nervous about getting on stage and, and yeah. talking to people or anything like that. Even though I'd never done it before, I'd never even had a microphone in my hand oh, yeah. or been in a comedy club before. Oh. I wasn't nervous about being there. Mm. I just wanted it to not go badly. Well, that's yeah. Because um, otherwise, why are you doing it? Yeah, I think so. I've gotten okay with that because I've been in a bomb mm. and gone ah. Oh. Well, we all have. <laughs> yeah. and just gone ah. Oh, it's not that bad. Oh, again, guys, we differ again. Yeah. Like, this is, kill me. Yeah, yeah I, I, you don't Fucking like, kill me. This you, is horrible. But I, I don't know why my mindset changed, but at the start, first six months, every single thing had to be perfect and yeah. go really well or I'd be, fuck this, I'm going home, I hate this shit. And then Never someone, doing this again. someone was talking, I think it was Ed Byrne was talking about yeah. bombing. And like, I went, if that guy... yeah can do it and yeah. be completely fine with going up and eating a dick and 
just going, well, I'll just fix that and work on it. And I went, oh, well, fuck. Like, if they can bomb, I can bomb. Yeah. Fuck it. And so um, in my head, I'd probably go, ah, it's the audience there. Oh, I wasn't set up right. That's how I'll justify it in my head. And that's yeah. why I don't get nervous about it. And that's why I, I like, yeah, eat it. I'll eat a dick. Yeah. Not literally, figuratively. I'll eat a dick on stage and it just... See, you're not the straight white male. <laughs> <you think you're. laughs> um, and I'll feel quite fine about it. And I know that's... Um, that, I don't know if that's a good attitude when it comes to comedy because I do want to succeed. I do want to be great every mm. time I'm up there. But... Um, I don't know. I just we've don't have. I don't have a fear of it happening. We've all got our own approach. Like everyone's got their process and their approach to everything. That's yeah. I, I'm not saying mine's the right one or the wrong one. I just but I cannot shake the nerves. People are like, oh, think of it as this, think of it as that, treat it like. I was like, there's nothing I can do. I shit through the eye of the needle for four hours before a gig. It's nothing. I can't change that. Yeah. I think what I'm gonna do to put those nerves back on me because I think they're good for you. Mm. Um. I think I'm gonna go up with an opener. <laughs> I'm going to go, I don't know what's going to happen for two and a half minutes here. Mm. Just going to talk to the audience and see what happens. And then I'm going to have my closer and I'm going to, I'm just going to live in it. And that will be nerve wracking because I won't know what's going to do. And I don't like not knowing. I like the security. You're a fucking madman is what you are. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I think as someone who's not talented, well, I won't say not talented, but I'm not... Um, I'll say it, he's not talented. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, um, I'm, not, I'm not there yet. Um, I'm just going to chuck myself in. Who is? And like, I, I think I'm, I'm at ECC on Tuesday. I, right. I, I'm probably going to try that. I've got a joke that I might want to try a new one and I'm just going to just... See what happens. ECC is different, though. Yes, because it? it's uh, that they're in a forgiving mind state. They know it's experimental. It's introduced that way. Th it's very different honest, when you get up yeah. on stage, at a, like like say for example the Guildford or like or Leaderville or a, a, sh a show that's not set out in like oh this is you know you're going to get people doing new stuff or mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? Yes. When, when an audience is going, well, I've paid like thirty odd dollars for a ticket. Yeah. Make me laugh, can't? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, that it's far less forgiving. ECC is. As for as great as it is, mm. it's not the place. I th I don't think it's not the place to relax into a bit if it works and go like, oh, this I fucking nailed this. Yeah, bit. yeah, yeah. They were fully on board with yes. you trying stuff. Yes, a hundred percent. It is um, cheat code. Yeah. Bring a notebook up and then watch them get even more into it because yeah. they're like, wow, he's never done this before. Yeah, we're in this with him right now. Yeah, that is uh, that that room has helped me. Yeah, hundred percent. I'm not saying it's not useful for anything at all. Like it's amazing. Yeah, but that's I'm what just saying that they are more forgiving than mm. your average. That's why it's helped yeah. me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's it's given me confidence. Yeah, fake confidence. No, no, it's not fake confidence at all because they're not gonna. They'll laugh, they'll only laugh if it's funny. Yeah, yeah, I just mean they're more forgiving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's that room's done wonders for a lot of people. It's good to see some of the um the. the I guess the yeah the open mic has progressed because yeah. of a room like that. Yeah, and stuff like Gong. Sense. Um and, and these sorts of rooms, but I just realised I derailed you earlier as well when you were talking about alcohol, about you moving away from alcohol. Oh yeah, yeah, I am thinking about that. Yeah, it's a. Di it's What's brought that on? I just I I feel better not drinking. Are you not drinking now? No, no, I'm drinking. I just had the biggest weekend I've had all year. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's why you're thinking about giving it up. That's true. <laughs> no, no, it was really good this one because. <clears throat> Because when you don't drink often, I haven't been drinking a heap this year. Yeah. I've been pretty, pretty well behaved and pretty health conscious. Um, you can tell you look really good. And because of that, when it's not week after week after week after week or mm. every fucking two or three weeks, you're like, I'm sick of this. I fucking hate feeling like this hungover. Yeah. That hangover I had on Sunday was uh, like the first one in like three or four or five months. And I was like, yeah, it was fun. I had a good time. I don't I, like how I feel right now, but eh, yeah, it's a little one. It's was fun. it easier to deal with, or, or was it harder to deal with because you haven't had because you're not used to dealing with them? Because um, I don't know what I'd be like now with a hangover after more than a fucking decade of never having one. No, nah, I lived in it. I was like, I feel like <laughs> shit. Yeah, but bring it. Yeah, I was like, I, li I feel like shit. Yeah. I'm fucking. But this is the trophy for for yeah. the night before. Yeah, I had a fun night last yeah. night instead of that's good. Sick of this, yeah. which is I think what a lot of people. Yeah, and that's what you're like. Well, you get, I reckon when you go from youthful 18 to sort of 23, 24, where you're doing it constantly and you can back it up, mm. then you get to that sort of 23, 24, 25 to 28, 29, and you're like, 
I'm still trying to go what I was doing, you know, week Ten or second ago, week yeah. after, and I can't. Mm. And you sort of you, you get to that point where I can't keep doing this. I'm sick of feeling like this, and I am. I yeah. just genuinely am. And um, so this is why I'm conscious of, and I I mentioned this last week. Nothing in absolutes. I don't like to ban anything. Yeah, because I think it that can lead to um bad things. Um, I'm pretty good at going. Oh, I had a bad t- day. Yeah. Or I had a bad choice. Or I made, uh, you know, oh, I've been eating healthy for three months straight and then I had a fucking cheat day. Yeah. yeah. Doesn't mean I'm going to keep eating like that, um, which is what I was terrible at. If I was going, oh, I'm doing a month without drinking and then I have one beer, I go, well, that's failed. Might as well have 10. Mm, um, okay. That's what I used to think. Now I'm like, I had one beer. That's all right. Just finish out the month though. Doesn't yeah. mean you don't stop. So my mindset's changed like that. But so I think because I'm like that now, I think I don't have to cut out alcohol, but certainly dramatically reduce it, um, and save them for special occasions. I'm going to yeah, Europe. so it means something. Yeah, yeah I'm yeah. going to yeah. It was far more special. Yeah, feeling hungover was special. It was like ah, uh, <laughs> I feel like shit, but it was fun. <laughs> you know, it was worth it. Yeah, yeah. But and let's be honest as well, like. A big, cause I haven't properly traveled for a while now, right? Yeah. But when I was age sort of, I, I think I first started when I was about 21, 22. Yeah. That's when I started like exploring Europe and North mm. America and stuff. Mm-hmm. Then I would come home, work for a bit and then go away again. Yeah. And then I went away, like in, like I said, indefinitely pretty much. So yeah. from the age of 26 to about 30, I just traveled around the world and just did my thing. But I, I drank all of the time. Yeah. And I drank everything. Yeah. And that was great. But a big that was a big part of traveling, and I don't I don't regret it either. Mm. I'm not like oh I wish I didn't do it. I didn't give a fuck. I yeah. had so much fun, mm. and I think you know you're going away soon. I think to do it completely sober when you're mm. used to you know having a beer here and there, a yes. glass of wine. It's but that it'd be a shame to not do that. Yeah, but that in my head is going to be okay, especially yeah. while I'm traveling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, have three or four beers. Yeah, I'm away. I'm yeah, doing my yeah. Th- yeah. I might have. I mean, it's a break. I'm in Italy. I'm yeah. gonna have. A wine and a pasta. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't have the pasta or a one pizza. Pasta. Or one pasta. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I'm not going to, I'm going to do it. I'm going to Oktoberfest. Yeah. I'm going to get drunk. Absolutely. These are, I'm, I'm fine with this. And I'll be honest with you, no part of me wants to drink alcohol again. But if, if there was like a thing where someone said, oh, you got to go to Vegas. I'm like, well, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah. Well, I'm going to be in Vegas sober. Get yeah. fucked. And, th- and that's the thing. Like, it's, um, Nothing in absolute. Yeah. Generalized, I will be not drinking too much forever. Yeah. And then you'll hit me and you'll twist my arm one day yeah. randomly. You'll be like, you want to go for a beer down the pub? Nah, why not? Yeah, let's have one. That one turns into 10. Yeah. Ah, it was one beer. Yeah, that's it what was it was. One big night that yeah. I haven't had for a while. Fuck it. That's how I'm going to live my life from yeah. f- forever. That one I think is very, very easily, easily um, attainable. Attainable. Yeah. And can, I can continue that. Yeah, I yeah. think so too. I mean, my relationship with alcohol was never a particularly healthy one, so that was the main reason for me. Like, I didn't want to enter parenthood whilst behaving that way. Mm. I was just like, well, you know, you've had, you've seen what, you've been a, a part of what that's been like. Yeah. You've seen what parents who are addicted to stuff can yeah. be like, so let's make sure that you've got it kind of under control. And for me, getting it under control was just making sure that I didn't do it anymore. Yeah. Because that also... You know, I I was overweight and stuff and I was drinking too and I never yeah. had the motivation or even in inclination to join a gym or to exercise. Yeah. So they sort of, you know, as soon as one went, I was like, well, maybe start exercising now. Maybe start eating better now. Maybe start looking after yourself a bit more. Isn't that, it's it's strange that talking about exercising and being healthy is becoming this, um, like you can't say it almost. You can't, it's become a right wing thing. Oh, uh, yeah, I don't give a fuck. Like, it's so ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's so stupid. I want to exercise. I want to feel better. Yeah. I'm not telling you to do it. Go fucking do what you want. But, like, I'm telling you, I feel better than you if I'm <laughs> exercising, not drinking, eating a nice, healthy, balanced diet, and, you know, maybe potentially meditating and having a fucking chill out every now and then. Like, one of my yeah, f- I'm going to feel better than you. I'm sorry. One of my favourite things uh, that people... 
and I, I'm I'm guilty of it too because I'll do it ironically. I like I make fun of it ironically. But people who talk about ice baths now are basically like the biggest douches in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. However, yes, you could. I I take ice baths regularly. You could tell me that there. Are, in fact, people have. People have said that it's counterproductive to building muscle. Like I don't care. I'm, yeah. not, I'm doing it because. It, do you know how good I feel afterwards? Exactly. It may it makes me feel better than all of you. <laughs> no, it's, it's in not, fact, I am better. I mean, than yeah. You. I am better. <laughs> no, it it does. I mean, you'll know, but. When you start your day doing something that's that fucking horrible, everything mm. after it is a breeze. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's everything after it is so fucking easy and you just feel really accomplished. Yes, and that's exactly how I explain it. People say, what's the science behind it? I say, I don't, I don't care. Know. I don't know. Because it's conflicting. So Some say it's great for like inflammation and stuff like that. I'm like, all right, fantastic. Mm. I don't have any problems with inflammation. Yeah. But then others are like, oh yeah, but if you're trying to build muscle, it's counterproductive. Yeah. And like, yeah, I get that too because heat and, and stuff is important for, yeah. for building muscle. Yeah. And I, I'm, I mean, I'm not 100% certain of that but regardless and i've said it before that contextual feeling of like this yeah. was so much pain that yeah. now just living feels easy and <laughs> getting in because you know how horrible oh, it is and yeah. forcing yourself to get in it mm. is just the, the worst Do you know what's happened lately this is fucked <laughs> so when i don't want to do that sort of shit mm. i've seen this clip of someone saying that every time they didn't want to do something David Goggins' voice popped in their head. Stop being a little bitch. Is that it what you started have? happening to me <laughs> and it's so fucked. I'll be like, <laughs> I don't want to get in that fucking ice bath. I don't want to go for that run. Mm. I don't want to run those extra laps. Whatever it is. And then I literally hear that cunt voice in my head saying, Don't be a little bitch. Fucking do it. And um, oh, yeah. I'm it, not. It, it, it's helping. It makes me do it. I'm not like I'm not against him and all the other no, type yeah, of stuff, yeah. but I've yeah. always I've always struggled with motivation. Oh yeah. But I've always also just done the thing anyway. That's great though. Because I just it, it's kind of like um well, it's like anything, but you can't expect to be motivated all of the time, mm. especially when you're trying to do things that are difficult. Like you're never going to feel mo. Who the fuck wakes up every morning and goes, "Oh, excellent! I'm going to eat egg whites and go to the gym now." It's <laughs> fucking boring. I want pancakes and I want to play PlayStation, but yeah. I'm not going to do that. Yes. And if I'm mo- if I feel motivated to go to the gym, fantastic. It's going to be more fun. Yeah. Getting into it. Mm. But if I'm not motivated and I can do it anyway, I'm going to feel better afterwards. Yeah. Even better afterwards than I would have if I was motivated and I enjoyed doing it, which is fucking bizarre. But that's how I'm hardwired. Yeah. Because afterwards I go, well, you did that anyway. You didn't really want to. Yeah. Like I messaged you this morning. I didn't want to train before I came here. Yes. But I was like, ah, but you need to. Yeah. When I, did, I didn't that's want why to I either. It. And when you messaged me saying. Yeah. Can we make it 11? Because then I could train. I could take Oscar's school. I could train for a couple of hours and then I could come here. And yeah. I knew that I would feel better even just being sat here yeah. rather than going, I'll do it later. Yeah. And then it becomes this thing of like, you know, like putting it off, putting it off, putting it off. And then you're like, oh, maybe I don't do it today. I'm like, well, that's not fucking good, is it? Yeah. Well, today's a d- bit of a different <clears throat> situation for me because I got the tats and I couldn't fully submerge. Mm. Uh, but even this morning, went down, did two two saunas, went down the beach after, got in. Oh, I got up like uh, up as far as in I could go without wetting my tats. And then... um. And then yeah, that was tats by the way, not tits. <laughs> and then had a, uh, a little ten minute meditation on the beach, and then come home. Yeah, like, nice. and that's a nice way for me to start my start day. day yeah. I feel really good. Like, and then I've done my work usually before that. I've done a little bit of work and a little bit after, and come here do this. Uh, my whole goal for this lifestyle that I'm living, my whole goal with B thirty two Media, my business, the podcast has always been to live the life I'm living right now mm. where it can center where where my life is centralized around building a healthy lifestyle okay yeah 100% has been always focused on if I am able to go sauna run yeah. exercise meditate um gym spend time with friends go to the beach whatever then I'm happy, and I've uh, I, I came to that realization last year. I've I've done it. Yeah, that's beautiful. My my goal was always to be able to make money sat at home in my underwear. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm living it, baby. That's always been my no. I, <laughs> so a, <laughs> a buddy of mine is a in England is an actor, right? Yeah. And um, when COVID hit, he had to start doing lots of voice work. Yeah. And he was doing it from his his house. Mm-hmm. And he would just send me a pitch, a uh, video of him doing these ridiculous either ad reads or he was doing like stuff for Warhammer for a while. Yeah. And so he would send me the videos and uh, 
I would be like, are you, are you just like in your, in your boxes? And you're like, yeah, yeah, this is the best part now. <laughs> the best part of this job. And I was like, I 100% agree. Cause that's, that's my goal. Yeah. My, like right now mm. I wake up in the morning and I do the research for the, for the show. I write on the, on the project. Yeah. Um, I do the research for the show, which is just finding news stories that are relevant for that day. Mm-hmm. I send them to producers. I go back to sleep. <laughs> and then I wake up a couple of hours later to see what they've accepted. And then we start writing jokes on them. Yeah. The whole, well, I've barely moved. Yeah. And then I take Oscar to school. I do all the gym stuff. And then I come home. I love that. And then the, like my day is done by about two o'clock on that show. Mm. It's, um, it is creating that sort of lifestyle that you crave or you want mm. is um it's quite um satisfying sa- it is satisfying, it's when, it's sta- satisfying. When, when you realize you have yeah i didn't realize i'd done it until i was like what the fuck i'm yeah. living it i'm doing it but i'm not willing i think initially i was willing to sacrifice friendships um family connection with people around me to get to, to where excel I w- and now i'm far um, I'm, I'm I'm far removed from that idea. Mm. I am now like no no no. My connection with my friends, family, that is far more important than my success. Yeah. Because without that connection with my friends and family, all my success means nothing. I agree, but I would rather have my job and you die today. Like if <laughs> <laughs> no, I, no, I do. I agree with you because again, I joke that the, jo- the 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 goal was to stay home and make money in my underwear. But the main thing was to be able to just be at home with my son. I'd never wanted to be that dad who has to leave the house at whatever, six o'clock in the morning and get yeah. back at six o'clock at night. He's in bed. I barely fucking see him. I was like, fuck that. Nah. Yeah. Which is what I was doing up until he was born. Yeah. And I was like, okay, let's hmm. really apply the hmm. whole writing stuff and then make that work. A hundred percent. But yeah, that, that connection is definitely the, uh, is the key, mm. I think. And just not forgetting those people who were... The, there for, for, you know, now uh, that's not saying don't get rid of the people who are toxic and bringing you down or yeah you know, yeah no i know like you, you can yeah. and you don't have to you don't have to get rid of them you can mm. just sort of remove yourself and that unless if they really want to be part of your life they'll, they'll yeah they'll, make they'll, the effort and yeah exactly but um yeah that's all that's become important to me now it's um <clears throat> Work is a, still a reasonable priority because you have to put food on the table for your family. Yeah. You have to look after yourself. I'm a single dad now, so money's even harder. Like the bills yeah. don't change. The bills cost exactly the same and I have half the income. So yeah. I, I still value money. Um, but I'm just not willing to kill myself for it. No. It always finds a way of working out anyway. I know that sounds a bit of a, yeah. a stupid kind of blasé approach to have, but... If I have to shop at bloody... Fucking target for my clothes. I love that he couldn't even name the two places. <laughs> if I have to shop at the fucking, I don't know, the place that you go. If I have to get my food from wherever you fucking peasant shop. Where's this? So this be a, it. Mate, this is a plain white tea from Cotton On. You know, two for 30 bucks. That's fucking. Fuck yeah. That's, um, <laughs> but you know. Aldi. was Aldi was the one you were going for, I think. Yeah, probably. I know, because you, you, you went with clothes oh, and you went with Target. Yeah, wish.com. No, but I, yeah, I, yeah, <laughs> That's yeah. my genuine, that's my. My little go-to uh, <laughs> on <laughs> on most MCs in, in <laughs> so and so from Wish dot com. Yeah, um, but yeah, I, I'm far. I'm definitely willing to uh, pinch pennies uh, and just live a far more simple life. I own my car, for example. Yeah, it's not great. Yeah, it's fucking like a 2009 fucking Holden Rodeo Ute mm. that I own. It yeah. Cost me like eight grand or something, five grand or fucking yeah. something to buy outright. I'd much rather be in that than paying 50 grand and having to make sure I earn or an month- extra $400 a, a week or yeah, month monthly to, repayments. Yeah, like exactly. out, I mean, now that's not to say like don't get them because if you're not in a situation where you're stuck and you can afford it, fucking do it. Um, mm. Or if it's a business thing, decision or yeah, it's a priority thing though. Mm. Like I'm, I'm really lucky over the last probably like two or three years when my income has increased to a point where I'm, I'm comfortable now yes i haven't had a day job in a very very long time mm. so with you know various tv jobs and, and even stand-up now to, is at a point where mm. you know there's been a few months where i've paid the mortgage just with stand-up money wow. so that's incredible. things things are getting like but at the same time mm. i don't spend much on anything i don't it's like it's not yeah, yeah. i don't know i have i have i think 
when you start with nothing, I think it's quite a good thing. I think yeah. if you if you don't come from a lot of money, you do learn to respect it. Mm. And uh, there was definitely periods where I didn't, and I was just like, oh, I've got money now, I can just spend it on whatever. Mm. And I, you know, I do need to be more cautious. I'm, I get frivolous at times, yeah. and I can't afford to be. So um, as soon as this trip comes finished comes to an end, I will be even. Yeah, I'll be even more. Not what's the word? Stingy. I'm yeah, gonna be, I'm going to be stingy, and I'm going to work hard. Well, it's, it's be hard because we condition ourselves as well. It, like we do it with, say, for example, you're talking about a diet, right? If you're eating clean. Um, you know, for say like three weeks or something, then you go like, do you know what? I'm going to reward myself. It's the thing that we do. We go, we reward ourselves with, you know, some naughty shit. Yeah. But we don't really need to do that necessarily. Like we're not dogs. No. And we do it with money too. Like if we're, if we're really good with money, if we start earning a little, oh, I'm going to reward myself with, you know, whatever. But if you strip it all back, you don't really need to. And the reason that you're doing it is because, you know, there's, there's some other reason, but it's not because you want, you you know, like it's not because you needed a brand new car yeah. or, or even because you wanted one. It's because you thought like, mm. I'm supposed to do this. Yeah. You know, I've, I've, so, I've suddenly got like X amount of more money coming in. Like, yeah. no, you don't. Your car's fine. Yeah. And that's, that's like with my business, I stopped doing weddings, for example. Mm. But it's a good income. And I could probably accept five or six of them and still be quite like, uh, it would help financially. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> But I'm, Refusing to do it. Good. I turn jobs down all the time now, or I outprice them to the point where I know they're going to say no. And if they say yes, it's sort of worth it. Then it's really worth it. Yeah. And it's not because I'm rolling in cash, right? Far from it. It's yeah. because I don't want to spend a month or whatever writing shit for. Sorry, but Match.com. <laughs> <laughs> we, we've parted ways recently. <laughs> I don't want to do that anymore. I, I don't, I don't want to do that job anymore. The yeah. money was fantastic, right? Mm. It was a stupid amount of money, mm. basically just for writing one-liners for, for Tinder and yeah. Plenty of Fish and all these other fucking um, dating apps. Yeah, Easy money. But a lot of the calls and a lot of the deadlines and stuff meant, because they're in the States, would mean that I was up like late at night and then that was creating this shitty kind of cycle of like sleeping in, mm. not going to the gym early in the morning, being tired when I'm working on other shows and stuff. And I was like, yeah. you know what, it isn't, isn't worth it. Just for like a, yeah. a three month contract or whatever. Mm -hmm. So now when they go to renew, I'm going to triple the price because they'll say no. Mm. And then I'm out. That's my out. Yeah. Yeah. I know. That's... Um but yeah. it's a really empowering thing, like saying no to weddings, knowing that you can make the easy money that way. Well, mm. I'm not, not yeah, easy yeah, money, yeah. but knowing that you can make good money that way. Yeah. But saying no to them, ultimately, because you just don't want to do them. Yeah. That is a, that's an amazing position to be in. I'm helping out two friends in the next six months. Yeah. Two friends. Which is important. They've asked if I could do it. Yeah, that's important. It, and way cheaper than I would normally yep. do for like a, 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 a yeah, anything. Um, it's not worth my time, no. but I'm helping them out. I'm getting a little bit of money for it, so that helps as well. Yeah. Um, but uh, I just uh, uh, that's the only time I'm going to really accept them. Yeah. Helping out a few friends. Yeah, because that's I mean that's rewarding enough. Yeah. I know that sounds really cheesy. Yeah. But it, is. it is nice to help people. It is. And I, I did. I did. There was um a week about three or four weeks ago. I did a, a day where I spent the whole day mm. doing work for other people. I was one of them, actually, I think. Was it a day? Because you, yeah. you filmed Chris. Yes. Down at the beach. You did my headshots. You saved me about 400 probably about $500. I'm going to do more for you as well. On headshots. But yeah. And well, I mean, they're great. And it didn't, I didn't get anything out of any of them. And I got to hang out with you for an hour. It was fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't get anything out of any of them, but I didn't. He got my company. <laughs> I don't. I don't need it anymore. No. Like, not that I don't need the money. I would like the money, but like, I think sometimes if you just be yeah, be a good person, yeah, and help out friends who have been there the whole time anyway, yeah. being supportive of your of your process, fuck it. Like, yeah, mm. it, 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 the money grab isn't everything. Nah. It just isn't. Nah, it just isn't. As long as you love what you're doing and you can, like, I, I my mindset used to be I needed I needed writing, uh, comedy writing. I needed that to replace my income, but that wasn't the case. I didn't need that. I need, just needed to be able to pay my way in the world with it. Mm. It was like I, it, as long as I could cover my bills and stuff, yeah. then you know I I didn't need to make whatever else I was making as well. Yeah. That was that was a pointless goal because you have this idea this idea in your head that you are going to eventually get to a point where you don't have to worry about it, mm. but it that that's not one probably not going to happen for a lot of people yeah you it will happen for me but no. <laughs> <laughs> you will always need something 
just for yourself, yeah. just as in, just to keep you entertained, mm. like just to you need something to do. If you if you're sitting there doing nothing, like what are you going to do every day of your life? Because your friends aren't going to be like that. No, um, no. You always need a. You always need something that's driving you to. Yeah, you know, and whether it's out of necessity, I guess, or out of like a. Mm. Um, let's face it, out of love a lot of the time. Well, I, I don't know. I, sometimes you need to. Sometimes you hear things. Sometimes you hear things when they're not there or when it's relevant to you. And I heard a, I heard all my life by the Foo Fighters the other day. I don't know that song. It's one of my favorite songs. Sing the entire thing now, please. No, all my life I've been searching for something. Anyway, <laughs> the lyrics in that song, yeah. I didn't realize. Like oh, it was very relevant. If you tell me you didn't realize it was about somebody looking for something, I'm going to slap you. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> searching for something and then they get it. And then it's on to the next one, on to the next one. Yeah. You're constantly searching for something. No matter whether you attain or reach your goals, you, you're Okay, but how, how do you feel about that, though? Because don't you think that's important? Yes. Because I think it's incredibly important. Because if you, if you think like, all right, I'm aiming for this thing, and mm. then you get, then where do you go? Yes. Were well, you saying you've completed podcasting on difficulty? Are we saying that we don't need to ever try anything mm. else on stage? Mm. Like that? No, I, my, I had a list of goals of shows and things that I wanted to write on by the end of last year, yeah. and I met them all. Mm. So what, what would I do after that? Just go, all right, that's me done then. What, yeah, you know, th- no, I, I was like, right, well, let's try and get on these shows that we know are going to be way harder for you to get in on because mm-hmm. their circles are even tighter. Yeah, and let's try and you know. Get I think one of, one of my main goals was to get on at the comedy lounge. Yeah, that was my I was like, you don't get booked there. Let's try and get two gigs by the end of the year. Yeah, and I ended up getting I think it was like two gigs a month. Yeah, at wow. one point. That's good. And I was like, well, there you go. Yeah, because you apply like you have really put the work in. You thought, well, you know that you're not good enough to be on at the comedy lounge at the moment. So what we're we going to do about that? Well, we're going to get better. Mm. So there's there's always that thing that you chase. And now it's that I want to be doing the comics lounge in Melbourne. I want to be doing the comedy store in Sydney. So I've reached out to them. Yeah, that's now the goal for next year. I want to be at least uh, not a regular necessarily, but somebody that can go over there and do those runs and then, and then come back. Yeah, and that's because w- otherwise you sit back and you don't do anything. Sorry. No, exactly. And that's exactly where I, I sit there and I have in my head this idea. I want this podcast, for example. I want it to get to a point where it's just it's just running itself. I don't have to worry. It's earning me money and I can just relax for the rest of my life. Can that's it? never, ever going to happen. Not no. that it's not going to get successful enough to be like that. No, but, but nothing can ever run itself. Exactly. Like you're always going to have to What do I think I'm never going to have to find another client? What do I think I'm never going to have to work again? Yeah. That's not... That's not the that I had this unattainable thing in my head where I could just get it done. But no, mm. you constantly and that's the fear as well. That anxiety drives from what if I don't get the work? What if I don't get this? You always get the work because you always try and get it, and you're yeah. always trying to, you know, get the next thing. Mm. And whether or not it's for my business, or whether or not it's I fucking have to work for someone, or whether it's this podcast, yeah. there's always something. Yeah. And it, it's um yeah thinking that there's going to be an end and you can just rest that doesn't that's not it because even when you finish even when you retire there's something there's like how can i help raise my grandchildren how can yeah. i what can i do next there's always something next so keep everyone keeps pushing i keep seeing so many people who are pushing this idea of you can get to a point where you reach financial freedom and fucking you are going to be happy for the rest of your life no uh, no, you're not. Um, and even if you get financial freedom, which is kind of cool, I love financial freedom. Um, I'm still going to be doing stuff. Yeah. So what's what's the difference? And also, whether I'm working for it or not, financial freedom suggests that you never need money again. Mm. Like, who, how realistic is that? Oh yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I'm, I'm I'm very pleased that I am in the position that I'm in now. That I earn more money than I've ever earned before. Mm. But I don't have financial freedom to the point that I can just stop doing this. Mm. Like I still have to keep doing it. So, you know, I don't. I personally don't understand that whole like, oh, I want to get this figure and then I'm set forever. It's like, yeah. Oh. Well, that's. I think, yeah, it is one of those. But I, I, I was what that, I was that guy. Yeah, I was that guy. I thought like. So what changed? I just, just, just I just realized. Realized, yeah. yeah, it's a fucking dumb thing. Yeah, like it'd be cool. Yeah, sick. I no, I see. I don't think it would be. You don't reckon? No, I don't. Do you reckon think it, it would be, be unmotivating? 
I think, well, I think that if you don't have anything, like I said, if, you, if you're never pushing towards the next thing, mm. then I, j- I just think you're sort of fucked. And do I think, think then you just slide downhill. Do you think it would give you fuck you money? See, I can't really imagine what fuck you money would feel like purely because if I had like untold amounts of money, let's just say you had like, you know, Joe, it's so that Spotify gave you a hundred million or whatever it was yeah. for, for the hard yarns, right? Yeah. You're not going to stop doing, well, you can't stop doing this, right? No. So that's one thing. Yeah. You would be striving to get it better all the time because you've got more eyes and ears on you. Mm-hmm. And then it opens so many other doors to other things that you could be doing. Like yeah. th- you guys could be doing, that. you and the Reapers could be collaborating on these up and joke tours like worldwide, doing yeah. these amazing, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I guess fuck you money to the extent that you can, like, like we're doing now with weddings, right? Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. essentially... I know we're not talking crazy amounts of money, but that's a fuck you attitude. Where yeah. you know, I know I can make money doing that, but I don't want to. Yeah. I want to make money doing the thing, even though it might be less money. I want to make money doing the thing where my heart is. Mm. And my heart's not in wedding photography. Yeah. So I guess like in that way, maybe, yeah, I can understand it from that perspective, but I can't ever imagine having, I can't imagine money replacing drive or money mm. replacing the, the need to do stuff. Yeah, I don't think it would either. I'd still go to the fucking fluffy duck shit gig I've got tonight if I had Joe M- Rogan money in the bank. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No offense, Aaron, but I've seen <laughs> how it's been going. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a. Hey, I, l- I love that he's trying to get that room going. That's I love a, that anyone's that's a doing interesting it. room. Yeah, <laughs> I, lo- I love that anyone's putting gigs on because I'm not. Yeah. I'm not yeah. putting. Gig- I don't want to put gigs on. No part of no, me wants fuck to. Fuck that. Fuck that. So I love that they're all doing it. And it's I love that, they're, you know, some of them are working, some of them are whatever. But the fact that, you know, if we, the more gigs, the better for us. I am intrigued or I am, I'm pulled in this direction. I'd love to have my own room. You know what? It's not run it, <laughs> but I'd love to have my own Rogan style. What's mother, mothership? Yeah. Now that's fuck. That's another level. That's big. One of the biggest clubs in the world now. But so. Let's scale it but down to like say say. For, would you like to be Johnny though? Would you like a comedy club, or do you want a room this that functions th- maybe once a week or something like this ECC is, or yeah. the? I wouldn't want a room that functions once a week. Mm. I'd want to the r- venue. Venue. Yeah. Um, but not run it. I just want to be a part owner. Um, my yeah. thing with not wanting to get involved in the running of rooms at the moment is because I know that, let's say for example, you had one, right? Let's say for example, yeah. you've, you've got a room yeah. and you come to me and go, hey, do you want to come in with me and help run it and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. My thing would be that I want stage time mm-hmm. and I don't want, for as much as I'd love to say, I don't care what people <coughs> think, I don't want people thinking the only reason that I'm on that stage is because I'm part of the running of it. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because, I mean, regard that would be the case. That you'd only be, I, if I was involved in running a room, that one of the stipulations would be, I get up every week. Yeah. I want it, like, especially if there's an open mic room, fuck it. I want to be up every single week. Well, that's what we, me and Wolfie and Delby talked about, doing a room where we can just go up every week and try our own stuff and then yeah. get a heap of other people to come up and try whatever they want. Yeah. But, um, yeah. But it's also just it's the ball ache of it. Like, it's like with, with um, a Fringe last year, or Fringe this year, just gone, I started emceeing. I did a few MC gigs mm. and realised very quickly that I didn't enjoy it. Emceeing? Yeah, I hated it. And I, I always knew that I wouldn't particularly like it, but people are like, oh, no, it's good for your act. It helps develop your stage presence and all the rest of it. And I'm like, oh, fine. My argument always to those people as well, because people are like, well, you can't, be, you can't be like a killer act unless you're an MC as well. Mm. And I'll just be like, Wolfie, go fuck yourself. Yeah. So that, he was always my benchmark for yeah. that. But when I, when I started doing it and I realized I didn't like it, when I was looking at my phone and seeing that I had gigs and I was going, <sighs> yeah. I've never done that with a gig before, ever. Yeah. And that would be how I would be if I was running a room. Like, you know, if if, it, if I go, oh, Wednesday nights, I've got to set up all the fuck. I'll be yeah. like, I'll get fucked. Yeah. I don't yeah, want to yeah. do that. No part of me wants to do that. I like MC. I'm not sure if MC comedy yet. I, I'm overly keen on. Look, those of you who do it, lo- I, I love it. I love yeah. watching, but I just don't want to be part. I don't want to do it. Mm. I don't want to do it. Yeah. Yeah, it would be. It's probably not on my, it's not my to-do list. No? Even um, even comedy itself, like I don't know if we're like media, everything. I go through little uh, moments of, oh, who cares? Why don't I just give up? Like I go through those moments. I think yeah. everyone does. Um, not and not with like comedy or anything, just with everything. 
Why don't I just fuck off and go back and work again? Like, be a cheap metal worker and just go be quiet and and have fun and have that, a wife and kids. That thought can't last for long, surely. Very short lived, <laughs> but it comes. But it comes up. Really? Just sometimes. Just but sometimes. You're like, why? Why? Who gives? It? Sick of this. I'm fucking over it. I just want to care. But like, that's a very one short temporary yeah. moment. Whereas when I was sheet metal worker, ah, oh, fucking nine out of the ten hours of the day were, oh, I get out of here. So yeah. it's it's not that, and it's not that I don't want to um, do this or do comedy. It's because it's work. It's hard work, <laughs> yeah, man. Fair enough. You just get tired. But then that's where the breaks come in. That's yeah. where I went out and had a drink with my mates last weekend. Fucking how good! I suppose it's nice relative because I was about to say, you know, I'm like I said, I'm sat at home in my underwear writing jokes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah. It's, uh, that is pretty relaxing. But I guess it is relative. It's like sometimes when. You know, someone would be like, oh, how's your week been? I'm like, oh, man, I've been so busy this week. Branchy, typically what that means is I've worked about 15 hours. <laughs> yeah. From my house. Yeah. So what does that mean? So like, okay, wh- where's your head go, for example? You go, you've got this nice job now. In them, Is there a lifespan? Let's say there's a lifespan on it. Oh. There's, a, there's a lifespan on all of the, all of the projects that I'm working on, all the things that I'm doing. There's, there is definitely a expiry date, and that is the fear with anything in media. And, oh yeah, hundred percent creativity. Because there's a lifespan, so like, and it can dry up at any point as well. This is the other thing. Exactly. Like some of these shows could just get you know taken off the air or whatever, or they decide, all right, we don't need as many writers as we have. We half the room or whatever. Mm. So that's why I've always. My, I've always tried to just go that extra step with anything that I'm working on because I want to just be more valuable. And that's part of the insecurity too, mm. is, no, is thinking like, okay, well, if they do half the room, mm. I want to be on the right half of that room. Therefore, I'm going to put more work in now because it, you know, it benefits me to, to just be better at my job anyway yeah. in, in other areas. Yeah. But d- does that mean, <clears throat> so like I often think, okay, this could dry up. This could stop giving me opportunities. Yeah. Um, social media might just stop existing because mm-hmm. of like misinformation bills yeah. and stuff like there's going to be so many different things that could potentially just change everything in an instant yeah. and if that all dries up where do you go to next and you always adapt I'll you always it go out. with it you will always work it out um, uh, but there's a part of me that's always um, that uncertainty of like what would you do next mm. and would I have to drop my ego and go back and work in sheet metal or something like that. that. And that's fine. But like, I I always had that anyway with everything. So I was working in a warehouse. Mm. I was working in a warehouse like with animal feed, like packaging and stuff. And I know it's the same thing. It's a different sort of scale, but it's like, well, this could go out of business. Well, then Mm. what? Or I could, I could get injured. Then what? Do you know what I mean? Like there's always something. Yeah. Oh, and my thoughts are always like, well, at least I got 15 years of fucking, how fun was that? Exactly. Regardless. There we go. That's where my mind yeah. always goes to. I'm like, well, who gives a fuck? Yeah. My but dream then, was to always do what I'm doing now. So if nothing else, I go, okay, well, you had like seven years yeah. of doing the thing that you'd always aimed at. And you know what? If you have to go get another job in a in a warehouse or a factory or something just to feed your family for a bit, yeah, so be it. And that's the thing. Uh, um, uh, it, media, creativity, it's so cutthroat. Mm. It does scare me. Because I'm leaning into a fucking field of that could just, yeah, you lose, you just lose it all. That's why you got to lean in hard. Yeah. So and that and that's having um, one foot in does fuck all. Mm. Like you have to. I thoroughly believe anything like this, regard uh, and not just talking about this industry. I'm talking yeah. about anything that you want to pursue. Yeah. An obsession, a good a good amount of obsession is healthy. Mm. It really is because. Do you want it to be your livelihood or not? Do you want it to be the thing that pays your way in the world or or, or do you want it to be like a hobby? Mm. If you want it to be a hobby, then forget the obsession thing. Mm. Just do it because you enjoy doing it from time to time or whatever. Yeah. But if you want it to be your thing, then mm. just go all in and put all of your energy and time into it. Again, not at the no. expense of relationships and stuff like that yeah. totally. But, you know, I think from what you said, it sounds like they, they were the expense at some point. Uh, that were, it and I'm guilty of that. Even if you're not, I'm saying like yeah. I I was guilty of putting things to one side and going no no no. The thing my work right now is more important than this yeah. other stuff. What was uh, I definitely when I was building my media business, mm. my media company, whilst working full time, yeah, and being a dad, um, because the, the justifications there, I'm doing this for her. Yeah, 
But yeah, that's true. But friends got a, a little bit on the back burner. Yeah, um, and, and still made time for them from time. But it's the same but with them. So, well, yeah. I, the sacrifices that I'm making, I'm mm. doing it because ultimately I want to provide for mm. for Scotty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. And that's I. That's I don't think that's a bad motivating factor either. Like, because no. sometimes I think like, oh, am I, you mm. know, am I re- am I sacrificing maybe a little too much? But I don't think I am. Well, that's where I look at it. I'm like, do you look at it like something like an AFL player who? They're smart. While they're an AFL player, they're investing in a cafe or a yeah. bar or a business or something like that. So that when they come out, they don't have to go into being a construction worker, mm. fucking whatever. Is that where you go, right, at some point, podcasts are going to be meh. No one's going to listen to them. They're not going to bring in the money. They're a, they're a big thing at the moment. Um, and if I fail to adapt and get into the right space, is that uh, is, is it worthwhile we have this time? Can I create a cafe or a fucking can yeah. I create an online business or something while I'm doing that as well just as a backup because mm. then you've got that business as your thing so we I've, I've we had um Todd Miner mine 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 main I can't remember what he told us how to pronounce his last name but he's a Nitro Circus BMX rider and as he's getting closer to the end of his career he's decided to build a business in um flotation flotational ramps I guess it is um or yeah Ramps that you can uh, fill with air. And that, that's now his business that he goes into and he loves it and he's built that slowly. Well, there's the, the key side. right there. So he loves it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So is that something that you go, hey, I love what I'm doing right here. Yeah. While this is all going well for me and swimmingly, mm. do you build something on the side? Or what do I fucking lean into podcast? Do I lean into my media business? I think you... It's interesting. It's it like is. There's a lot of... There's a lot of what ifs. Like, what do I do? I, I don't think there's a right answer. But. I, d- I don't think there's a right answer either, but I, d- I don't think that... I think the thing that you s- lean into on the side, as you say, like the thing that you maybe end up investing or starting a business or whatever, mm. it will pop out so much because it, if it's the right thing, it will pop out to you so much because it will be something that you're super passionate about anyway. Mm. Like in- inflatable ramps yeah. is obviously part of the BMX world. Yeah. A thing that he's probably very well versed in, super knowledgeable about, and and had a great idea, and went yeah. fuck, I'm going to do this thing, yeah. and I'm sure it excites the hell out of him, yeah. and also it's going to make him a tidy packet on the side. Yeah. But let's just say you and I go, all right, we need a little nest egg. Yeah, let's start a fucking bookshop. Yeah, and a couple of months in, we're like, what the fuck did we do this for? Yeah. Just because we wanted a bit of a safety net. There's right. no difference to just having the day job that we did have. Because that was that. I mean, I don't know about you, but I was making money writing jokes for all these different companies, writing articles for publications while I was doing my day job because I was terrified of quitting it. Mm. Because that was the safety net. I was making fuck all by comparison in that day job, mm. but it was guaranteed money. Yeah, making like three times what I was on the side, but just afraid to let it go. Got to rip that cord. I had Gotta to, yeah. yeah. And then it, it was my wife who was like, "You realize that if you weren't at work all day." Mm you wouldn't have to do all this other work in the evening, but also you could, that's the whole day that you've got then to work mm. on these, on other stuff and getting, and sure enough, that's exactly what happened. It's always the biggest fear is getting rid of that parachute. Yeah. But it, I'm not telling everyone to do it, but nine times out of 10. No, I need most of you to stay in your <laughs> fucking jobs. <laughs> um, Don't come for me. The people, well, and that's the thing. Like I don't want people to chase, I want people to chase their dreams and do that stuff. But no, you know what really I also that. understand is when they do do that, mm. If they st- if they start to do that, they won't have time to listen to us. <laughs> they won't have the because I used to listen to podcasts to give me motivation to get out of my job. Yeah, and now I'm doing it. It's funny, isn't it? That Am I providing the voice for yeah. people to listen to to motivate them to have a crack? Like a Look, I'm I'm, I'm sure that somewhere along the line, people have listened and know enough about your story to go like, I'm going to give my thing a go, mm. whatever it is. Yeah, whatever point in life they're at, or. You know, like, I'll be honest, when I listened to that episode of John um, Elliott, like, I was super inspired toward nothing, though, but just by this person. It's not, I didn't want to get camels and walk across the fucking country. Yeah. But I was like, holy fuck, I love that he's done this. Yeah. What an amazing story. What an amazing, like, mm. it's great to know that he's out there. Yeah. Oh, I love Do you know it. what I mean? I was uh, just like, yeah. what, what a fucking character. Can we make movies about him, please? Like, what an amazing individual. Mm. Yeah. Well, I uh, I think the more people in the world like that, the better. And, um, Absolutely, and because you don't need. Sorry, my point there is that you don't need to be like uh, you know you don't need him to inspire you to do that thing. No. But you can definitely take inspiration from the fact that he did something really difficult, mm. but fun as well, of course. But he did something that was really really difficult, very dangerous, blah blah blah. Mm. But he did it. He broke away from like the norm and he did the thing that he wanted to do. Yeah, and pretty much everyone wants to do something along those lines. 
maybe not as a you know not like we're doing as a as a job or whatever but yeah they want to just take a little break from what they're doing or they don't want to go to university just yet they want to go out and fucking travel the world or whatever yeah i think i know mine is definitely comedy yeah i love it same i really love it same i love it (laughs) (laughs) but it's hard and I'm and I'm a lot further away from where I want to be than I am in other areas, so it is scary. Yeah, like I've built this media business and this podcast. I find that much easier, mm. but the one I really want to do is comedy. Yeah, and um, I guess that's the one to lean into. That's the scariest one because there's a lot of people who want to do that. Um, but yeah, that's the one. But no one's doing it the way you're doing it. No, no, exactly. No, yeah. no one will ever do it the way. The, the way that you're doing it. that's the thing to remember like there's people out there that are quite similar in nature to me mm. s- similar in nature to you and i'm talking about their stage persona like the thing yeah. that they're doing on stage mm. but they're not doing it the way that we're doing it mm. and that's the thing to i think the thing to remember is just to hold on to like well i'm giving my voice and i'm doing like my thing mm. and if it's working it's working you know david hughes that's been a wonderful chat it's been great it's been lovely very much enjoyed it once again Congratulations on the new studio. Thank you. And just everything over the last few years because, yeah, yeah like I, s- I, I know I've messaged you on and off about it, but yeah, it's it's an amazing thing to see. Yeah. Like it really is. It's uh, been fun and I do hope listeners aren't um, <laughs> concerned that we're going to stop doing this because uh, I love doing this. And Last um, one ever, baby. Last one ever, baby. <laughs> <laughs> 200 episodes next week as well. So Delby will be back for that. And uh, I think... Speaking of not drinking, I think we're going to have a couple of drinks with Wolfie and have a bit of fun. So yeah, nice. that should be good. And I'm going to go get a skin check today So because I don't know if you see that. Oh, I see a little red mark. Yeah, yeah see so listeners or watchers, you'll see there's a red mark there. Got a red mark there, red mark there. Got red marks everywhere. Oh. And I want them gone. So I'm going to get a skin check and uh, um, get that all sorted. So I've got to go. I've got to do a few things. So maybe this will be the last one. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, fuck. Um, thank you so much for coming on. And now Love I have you, to baby. remember how many sponsors we've got to thank before the episode. So. <laughs> 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 <laughs>